Greetings from Podcastville, you bad motherfuckers. The Church of What's Happened Now is sponsored by Stamps.com. Listen, time is money. Stop wasting your precious time going to the post office when you could send letters and packages right from your desk. Do it today with Stamps.com. My wife uses it, and it's one of the best things we got in the house. Sometimes I got I get home, and there's 10 packages in the mailbox. Ping, ping, boom. She throws the shirts in there. She puts a label on them. You weigh them. Everything comes from Stamps.com. I use Stamps.com. You know why? Because it saves time and money, and they're both precious. Right now, they got a special offer for the church family, a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. To go to step now, go to stamps.com and click the microphone at the top of the homepage and use promo code church. That's stamps.com and enter church and start sending mail like a doctor with stamps.com. The podcast is also brought to you by Quip. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing your teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers, and Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even more enjoyable than ever. I love brushing my teeth with Quip. Why? Sonic vibrations. They're gentle enough on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. Quip is perfect. You see why I love Quip? That's why... And I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're backed by 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash Joey, J-O-E-R, right now, you'll get your first refill, refill pack for free with the Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free. Go to getquip, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Joey. Let me explain something to you. Everybody's looking for a good CBD company. Well, it ends today. I got the one. I use it myself, and I fucking love it. I'm talking about CBD Lion. They make products from start to finish. CBD Lion got you covered, whether it's the vapes, the cartridges, or the shatter. And if you're not into fucking smoking, oh, they got tinctures, and they got these gummies. Fucking tremendous. You get stoned, you eat three or four gummies, and you pass out like a fucking baby, all right? Their products are clean, Bobby. So go to cbdlion.com and check out their third-party lab results yourself. Third-party lab results yourself. Church family gets 20% off your first order. Just press in church at the checkout. Kick this motherfucking mule, Lee. What are you, fucking nuts or what? Eleanor Kerrigan in the house. That song reminds me of Trading Places. Remember that? Remember scene? that? Who put the, the cools out in my yeah, fucking car? But the black girl with the real small titties. Oh, I was like, shit. I could do that. I, I could do that part. When he busted that song, I love that jam. That's I a great song. That jam. We lit Judy Kelly's teddy bear up one night to this okay. jam in the back of the car. What? What does that mean? She had a teddy bear in the back of the car, and, and she was crying about fire? her ex boyfriend because she cheated on him. And we lit the fucking teddy bear on fire. We're all coked up and the fucking teddy bear's melting. (laughs) (laughs) How many things did you set on fire as a kid? Probably everything. Everything. You have to. It was like a thing. Oh, my God. If you don't don't understand it, light it on fire. I used to light more bonds on fire. (laughs) My little brother started a fire under his bunk bed. We were like, what's that light? And and then he's like, I don't know what happened. And it just got bigger. We were like, oh, shit. Fires get big fast. Dude, my mom could have lost every. You know, when you were a little kid, I started people. with lighting fires and pissing on them. Mm-hmm. When I was like six, when I came from Cuba, <laughs> I would hide a there. I would light like, like a little fire in the corner and pee on it. <laughs> and then one day, I lit a fire across the street, and the fire got out of control. I ran out of pee. I was gonna say, and I ran away. And the fire department His came. Hose didn't work. I'm from oh my, my fucking God. window. Yeah, dog. You know, we like fire is and it's fucking Ari tremendous. Ari was bad with that. Do you remember that? He used to light them all the time at the comedy store. Who's terrible? Oh, when didn't he was a they light guy? riot up a fire on fire and they blamed that was on Eddie me. Griffin. <laughs> Somebody lit him on fire. I want to know who it is because I got the blame for that. They and blamed was, it on you? I was in Miami. I guess they locked him in the bathroom <laughs> yeah. and they fucking lit him on fire. Eddie I got Griffin. a call from Princess Corey like, <laughs> did you light Robert and on fire last night? I'm not even in fucking town. Be honest, though. Did he give them the idea? No. <laughs> no. You know, no. Eddie Griffin <laughs> used to call him Lucifer and he'd be like, fire, burn up, Lucifer, burn up. And he used to light matches and throw them on stage at him. I used to pee my pants, but I'd be like, Eddie, they're getting close. I didn't know they locked him in the bathroom. I forgot about that. What was the deal with him? He didn't like when you wore crosses. 
What? Eddie Griffin didn't like when Wait, he walked Eddie across or... his on stage. I... He would say, get that Satan thing off, because he used to give Marilyn a hard time. You got that voodoo around your neck. Maybe. I don't know. It's, I hate when people wear the rosary bead. That gives me anxiety. Yeah, because I'm a Catholic school if I see kid. An old We're not lady. allowed to put it over. You're not supposed to put it over no, your neck, like Madonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and a lot of people do that. If you got them wrapped around your hands and you're praying at the track That's or different. something, I'm with you. I'm with you. I took rosary beads to the track one time. I needed the twenty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need the twenty. You better take those rosary beads. <laughs> you start out. rubbing them real Dead hard, like, like it's gonna come to life. Do you ever like when I first became a Catholic? <laughs> like. As a kid, like I still remember all the things, but once like I got indoctrinated, mm-hmm. like if you ask God for something and you didn't get it, like God, the Mets better win today. You got and mad. You, you got pissed, like fuck God. That yeah. motherfucker don't work because the Mets lost. And then my mom would say, you can't ask for things like that. Right, that's like, what my mom would say. What? You fucking that's... crazy. You could do well, what is he for? I'll get it. Yeah, it makes the, sense. The, the Mets can't cover by two <laughs> runs. What good is he? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not asking that's for for, much. Probably because there was more people in Philadelphia praying for the Mets think to about lose. When they, <laughs> think about when the Mets played the World Series. How many people yeah. were there? The like, 86 Mets? 86 so Mets. That's what you're going when with? The guy, the okay. guy Dropped the ball at first base. That's Bill Buckner. Bill That's Buckner. Red Sox. I'm a big legs. Red Sox fan. It's funny how many people were like praying, like, please God, let him not catch it. <laughs> and they're like, I told you, God answered my fucking prayers. It went between his legs and shit. God hates that guy. Remember when they put him in Curb Your Enthusiasm? Bill Buckner, I mean. And then they, it was a Jewish thing. You might know this, where you have to have 10 people to say <coughs> a prayer. It's Yeah, yeah. If what's it's, it called? Uh, uh, Ten, ten people. You have yeah. to have ten people. So uh, Larry David brought Bill Buckner, and they wouldn't let him in. They were like, "No, oh, he's bad luck." <laughs> it's so great. I love that they Poor still Bill razz Buckner. that guy. Oh my god! Oh, in Boston, think talk about yeah, getting yeah. set on fire. I thought they were going to kill that yeah, guy. Yeah, I thought they were going to kill him too. Yeah, this is. Didn't the guy Scott Norwood? Didn't he miss a field goal for somebody? Buffalo Bills, and he fucking. Tried suicide. Well, that's yeah. Like Buffalo people, probably don't talk you talked him into it. Yeah, they'll, talk, they'll come to your house. Listen, like Here's fucking, what's... what's his name when he talked to Frankie Five Angels and Godfather <laughs> Two? He talked them into committing suicide. You gotta have a party. You like just the have Roman. a nice Italian party. Yeah, they have a know, party. Take a bath, and then at the end they put a bath and they slit their yeah. wrist. And that's how they nice go. Nice Italian out. The guys bath. Like, well, comedians always complain about like the negative stuff you get on social media. Like I remember this year, like the Bears kicker missed like four field goals oh in a game or something. They, like he must have had to just delete his accounts. We had like, billboards. Can you imagine an entire they were city? sending him money from Philadelphia because it happened against yeah. the Eagles. Oh, they sent him. Uh, they they sent were his sending Venmo. him money in his Venmo. Thank you for missing that kick. <laughs> Thousands of dollars people were sending him. Philadelphia's evil, bro. They had billboards of that guy uh, in Philly after that kick. Thank oh, no. you to. The bears for <laughs> like crazy lit up everything. Cause I always it, thought that I came from a weird neighborhood. Like, <laughs> I always knew that. That's and not funny. It. Not weird in the sense. Mine was of weird, weird too. But it wasn't like the neighborhoods I saw on TV. It wasn't. Oh the yeah. Shit that I grew with the shit that I was growing <laughs> up with was not on the Brady Bunch. Never. But I never felt more at home. Than when I went to Philadelphia the first time. Isn't it the greatest place in the world? Sorry, Lee. It's not that it's the greatest place in the world. It's, it's so that fucked up. The that attitude, it's they just don't give a fuck. Oh. Like They're- my first contact with those people was in the eighth grade <laughs> when I went to when I went to see the Stones, and I didn't know anything about concerts. I didn't know anything about music, really. I didn't know anything about social skills. I knew nothing about leaving my name. I thought, yeah, I knew about social skills. You know, I, I, but I didn't know that there was people that were. But I feel like that in all the East Coast now. Like you feel that certain immediate neighborhoods, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you know, I loved all that. I love watching old sports things. Oh yeah, because they really show you the heart of the country. Like mm-hmm. you get to see. Like I love to see Ohio State in college. I yeah. love when they play. You know. They go crazy. I, I loved for watching that. the Houston Oilers when I was a kid when Earl Campbell played. I had yeah. never seen anything like that. People with blue and white bonbons. Everybody yeah. fucking doing it at unison. But Philly, they were just animals. Like they were, animals. And I got into the Sixers once Julius oh, Irving please. became a, a Sixer. Mm-hmm. I, my whole life was a Sixer. And then Daryl Dawkins. Mm-hmm. We showed uh, Daryl. We showed. I showed somebody. Simone. Simone. Steve Simone, yeah. I showed him the Sixers against the 
Portland Trailblazers. Clyde Drexler. But this is way before Clyde Drexler. This is oh with yeah, Maurice yeah, yeah, Lucas. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And fucking, they had a tremendous team, and and Bill Walton was the center. You yeah, were a little yeah, girl. Yeah. I was a fucking little oh, kid. Because I'm like, Walton. And I still six, remember that the Sixers Celtic. were going to lose, but Julius Irving slam dunked so bad on Bill Walton, and Bill Walton was trying to call an offensive. Now, I was always a fan of Bill Walton because he was a hippie, and he smoked yeah, dope, yeah. and he had long hair. But when he, he tried, was a little bit of a baby. When he went for the offensive foul against Julius Irving, I lost all respect to him. Like, that was done. Like, just take that you got fucking slammed on. Slam. And not only did he get slammed And that slammed was old on, school way to. If you watched the move, it wasn't that he slammed on him. It's that he took the rebound, took the ball all the way down court, eluding defenders. Mm -hmm. And then it was just him and Bill and two black dudes chasing him. Yeah, yeah. And he just picked up that fucking ball. And he goes, you know what, Bill? I'm going to lose this game. <laughs> but you're going to remember this slam for the rest of your life. And he just slammed in his face that the Bill Walton Lance, you actually see Bill Walton telling the ref, like, no, offensive. And offen the ref's like, fuck yeah. you. But if you watch <laughs> like the a move, man, yeah, pussy. yeah, you're like a man. And it Especially was, back then, If man. you ever watched Julius Irving, Julius Irving. I watched, he was our I, god. He was my light. I mean, he's We my still play god. games and call it Julius. Everything's Julius. Julius. Everything is Julius. Fucking... He uh, he used to hook people. Julius Irving, they let him get away with that for years. Yeah. And I use that. It's a little hook with your hand. Uh -huh. And you hold the opponent's waist. And if you oh. watch any of Julius's move, his best moves was when he step out and he'd time you. So when he like, put his foot back, he would take off. So he learned how to put his foot out and go back and fake and when you came back, he would take off on you. But he would take off on you as you were coming towards him. Yeah. But how he got around you was with that hook. Yeah. And he would always hook you, push you. And in that play, you actually see him like fucking hooking Bill Walton. <laughs> you you always would see his hand his get in hook, between yeah. two people. And he just threw it the fuck down. And after that, Bill Walton lost all credibility in my eyes. I don't give a fuck if he falls off a fucking building now. Him and his fucking son. <laughs> Jesus. Him and his him fucking his faggy son. fucking Aww. son, the coach of the Lakers. Well, he's good looking, yeah, but he's nine fucking 82. <laughs> I'd rather have an ugly coach who wins. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have that Eddie Munster looking oh, coach yeah. from Arkansas. He looked just like Grandpa from the Munsters. <laughs> but that motherfucker, no, Houston. Houston, when they had five slammer jammer, the coach looked just like Eddie Munster. That's hilarious. Just like Grandpa. Grandpa. But he yeah, knew how yeah. to manage those I, motherfuckers. I, he's good looking, but he, and he's got LeBron. He can't make it to the playoffs. What good is he? Yeah, but you, what you, good is he? LeBron plays by himself. He's just, yeah. he's, he's, I don't know it's nothing ridiculous. about what's going on. I do, I do it's know a that they're getting ridiculous. tortured. Yeah. That LeBron. The Sixers are phenomenal here. right now. Are Celtics, really? too. We're doing Sixers okay. are Sixers are a better team, Who's but they're we? both Who's young. Celtics. You haven't shot Jesus a fucking Christ. ball in twenty two years. There's Neither no of we. you. So, but I never say we. But you remember? When I never say we won today. That's because Boston's a better city than when you grew up. It doesn't Whoa. even matter. Hey, it doesn't watch even matter, mouth, Frankie. Just saying. You didn't work. fucking even throw a ball in high school. So Did you ever no play we. basketball? No, I'm Jewish and I'm short. No, so it's then gross. don't say we. You didn't do. I'll guts. say whatever. I'll no. say we. You do, do you guys? Do you guys get emotional watching? Like I. I'm oh, not. Yeah. I, I'm I get, I get, watching I get you made right up, now. I get made fun of no matter what I say. So who cares? But like now, when I like on Instagram, if I see like replays, especially of the teams when I was in school, like I'll start getting almost teary eyed. Oh like, yeah, we were talking about Julius. Talking about Julius fighting Larry Bird, one of my favorites. He got him by the throat. Yeah, they were both my scratching each picture. other. Like two fags scratching <laughs> each other's faces. Let's throw some punches here, all right? <laughs> No, Both Julius years. picked him up. It was Larry. Yeah, it was like, Larry was, and I'm a big Larry Bird fan too. But it was just so funny. I was like, Oh my god, Julius is gonna kill him. Julius right now. never His had hand a, was like Julius all never the way never around had a beef his with neck. Nobody. No, Julius but Larry not, talked a lot of shit. Yeah, well, Larry just put. Larry Dude. was so good. He didn't have to say nothing to you. It was that stupid look on his fucking face. I've never seen anybody make it look so awkward, no, but yeah. amazing. When Larry Bird shot Same 40 set. points against you and he wouldn't change expression, <laughs> that's something to your psychological. Like, this motherfucker's got nothing. I got to crack him. It's like his shorts were getting shorter. I don't, it was very, oh, uh, he was my favorite. I he, mean, look, Julius was my favorite top all time, but then it's Larry Bird right after him. 
Is Julius Irving still around? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. he's on Twitter. We were on a flight uh, last summer. I was so nervous. I would have had a heart attack. I, I, I'm not telling you. See, because I get Joe, him by I the ear. I was the same way. I sat next to Barkley. And I didn't say nothing. Oh, Barkley the I end. love. Till the end. Yeah. <laughs> but I've met him a million times. Till the last 10 minutes. Julius Irving, I wouldn't uh, say anything. I didn't to, say a word. And I was I could, scared. I could just break Julius and go, listen, <laughs> I went to your fucking Converse clinic. <laughs> At Fordham University, 1975. What do you got to say about that? When you showed up with your kid in the Mercedes Benz, obsessed, and you got out of the car, and we we're all waiting online like little fucking morons. That's the only time I wait online as a kid. To in see those days, yeah. When Julius, remember he wore those shitty Converse sneakers. When it's Julius, amazing. when Julius first signed with the Sixers, he also signed. They designed the sneaker for him, Converse, mm -hmm. and it was called the Limousine for the Feet. Yeah, and he. If you bought a pair of limousines, remember sneakers were Converse were ten ninety nine, eleven ninety nine. Yeah, ten dollars if you get them down to Lancy Street. The Jews, if you went down to the Lancy <laughs> Street him. and told them I'm the first customer of the day, you get them in the chinks in Chinatown to go for well, the, the chinks were the best. They'll the come chinks down. were the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Then there was Coach Converse. Oh, yeah. If you wore Coach Converse, you might as well put punching bag on your head because you were going to get smacked 50 <laughs> times. It was a big difference. There was a dollar between yeah. Coach Converse and regular Converse, Chuck Taylor's. Yeah. So if your mother didn't go the extra dollar, let me tell you something. You might as well. <laughs> you know these people that get cyber bullied? That's nothing compared, compared to, to the, bu the beating you were going to get. That's and right. And God forbid you didn't show Listen, You, you beat them and throw dollars you out. You could only show up with Converse. P.F. Flyers was second, and Keds came in a tight third. That's hilarious. But if you bought your sneakers from Panty Pride, if your sneakers slip and slide, take them back to Panty Pride and all <laughs> that shit. We used to torment you. My mom you. bought me sneakers oh at my the God. fucking supermarket. I knew once kids that her. would come out with new sneakers, and within 10 minutes, they'd be sitting in the corner crying, like <laughs> taking the sneakers off, throwing all them. All confident. Like, oh, like my mother bought me shitty foot. sneakers because we would torment them, especially in the Spicky neighborhoods, like yeah, 140th yeah, 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 yeah. up there. Yeah. With my godmother, those kids were poor. Yeah. But they made sure they had Chuck Taylors on because nothing is being poor. But if you had Chuck Taylors, at least you, you, could, are right. you could step on out. And they would take them home every night, those poor kids. And they would they take that same toothbrush, they'd brush their teeth with <laughs> And they would scrape the bubble gum and the shit off their sneaker. Those sneakers were immaculate. You use a different toothbrush. I you, did that. No, you did not. Yeah, Puerto Rican yeah, kids, not the ones oh, I hung out with. Man. They had one fucking tooth. They used to clean my shelter. Bro, up. I hung out with a Puerto Rican family so poor they had one toothbrush for the family. Like, no, every, come yeah, on. Yeah, everybody came in. <laughs> Every morning I had to, had to you pick a number. You gotta learn how to steal. It was like at a deli. Point. It was like a deli. You had to pick a number. No you had to wait on like number nine. Maybe get cheaper sneakers. You can afford another kid toothbrush. That's and then the stuff. kid Ricky would sneak in the night, get take out the with toothbrush, your logic. and put like turpentine on them and shit. <laughs> and then after that, you took white shoe polish. And they always you had the put them on teeth. your white fucking sneakers. That's right. Like these kids were so poor. Like I had taken life for granted. Yeah. My sneakers would get dirty, and my mom would throw them away and buy me a new pair of sneakers. Oh, that's Puerto crazy. Rican. We didn't the do Sedenos, that. The Sedenos, the Irish kids are up yeah. above 140th Street. Those sneakers lasted you a year. Yeah. You made sure because you My mom used them. to wash our sneakers sometimes. Those kids, if, if, there was, if, if it would rain, those kids on 148th Street, they would just take their sneakers off <laughs> and run around barefoot. They were <laughs> savages because yeah. those sneakers meant everything to them. Everything. Everything to them. And then when the sneaker died, you tied it together. And you threw it up in the air and it had to get on a cord. Mm -hmm. So you would have 20 sneakers on that cord as you were growing up on the electrical cord. It's the best. And once a year, the fucking guy from PSNG would come out <laughs> <laughs> with like a just gas mask on off. and fucking gloves. And you'd have to take all the sneakers down. I mean, this yeah. was just a process that you did. It you would did judge that. by your sneakers. I thought meant there was a drug dealer in the neighborhood. No. No. Well, what? That's, I mean, that's what white kids fight. Like, they would come up with rumors. I thought sneakers on the line just meant there was a drug dealer in the neighborhood. No, no that meant that's just, just get rid of your sneakers. There was a oh, kid yeah, that was said, fun. I don't want to throw away my sneakers. I don't want nobody to take them. Yeah, well, there you that's go. What, that was the thing. Okay. But people wear those chucks till they had holes in them. What? Your toe was, was coming Taylor? out. Yeah. Let me tell you something. People who wore Chuck Taylors today, 50 year olds and above, I guarantee their feet are fine because all there was with that cushion, you put a pair Flat. of Chuck Taylors on today and you feel the fucking difference. Yeah. You're like, Jesus Christ, a glass could go through this. Mm -hmm. Like a glass could yeah, go through It's almost like this. being Chuck barefoot. I'm barefoot. not a fan. 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm an Adidas shell now. top kid. Well, yeah. look what I wear. I yeah. love my Adidas shell tops. Now, those you clean with a little bit of right. a soft scrub yeah, yeah, and yeah, a yeah, toothbrush? Yeah, my, 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 my wife, Puerto Ricans, these up yeah, from yeah. time to time. I got the... I got the walk around ones and the stage ones. Absolutely. Show shoes and, and uh, the stage ones. Yeah. So I take stage yeah. Adidas and then I have my regular Adidas. They stink like fucking. I know you always say that, how they stink. Dead dicks, good all they do. <laughs> but I was always. Mine don't stink. I, was I don't have them on now. But... I was a com. I was. I started off as a Ked guy when I came from Cuba. Then I went up to PF Flyers and then I was Chuck. I don't Taylor. know what a PF Flyers is. PF Flyers was. Flyer. 1970. 71 72 pf flies made you run higher and jump oh, faster that's hilarious that was their slogan we had the pump for that the pump came later Remember the, the pump? pump came in like <laughs> later on when you pumped them up and you thought you were bad all the white kids had, are running and getting swatted down by the black why, kids it's amazing that's why Always it's a funny. true story that i say on stage i mean i turned it into a joke years later yeah pf fly i was never a fast kid okay i was quick but in long distance you would catch me Okay. All right. So when the, the marketing tool behind PF Flyers was, they make you jump higher, and they'd show a kid like jumping a fence without touching it, and then they show like my a, brother Charlie, and they show like a Puerto Rican kid getting chased by cops. And finally, <laughs> and finally the Puerto Ricans had going woof and giving up. PF Flyers that make you jump higher and run faster. <laughs> but the white guy got away. So I went home and got the fucking PF. I begged my mother to get me the PF Flyers. But then I had to put them to the test. Okay. So how did you put them to the test? You tortured the uh, acidic Jew on the block. His name was Mr. Martini. He would chase you? Chase us for blocks. <laughs> chase us for blocks. In all that clothing? In the black suit oh. with the whatever. Dog, it His was curls sad. are flat? He's he like didn't pissed. have that. He didn't have oh, that. Okay. He only had like a little curl and he wore the thing. He was the typical slumlord, like what they call oh, yeah. a slumlord today. Ugh. <clears throat> he lived three houses. He owned three houses that were next to each other, but he lived uh -huh. in the basement of the middle one. So you weren't even allowed. There were metal bars with those spears sticking out, yeah, like little ch ch chings like that. And like we Spikes would play games, you thing. weren't even allowed to talk in front of his house. Oh, I hate people like that. So he would come we out had a lot of those. He would come out and go, "Hey, go down a fucking block if you guys want to talk." So the first time he did that to me, even at that age, I was like, you don't own this far. Like, I was Cuban. I was trying to be American. I thought I knew all the American rules. It's a free country. Yeah. So I told the you guy. You got to use that every time. I told time. the guy right off the bat. I go, it's a free country, pal. He goes, it ain't fucking free, you spick motherfucker. <gasps> yeah. Go down the fucking blocks. So I'm like, spick motherfucker, really? Free? Okay. So I got me and my other little dirty guys, and we just started on the slow torture chamber. Eggs to his building. Eggs. We egged everybody. Fucking yeah. toilet paper. If we killed a rat, we'd fucking throw, throw the there. rat in the fucking thing. And then yep. he'd, he'd come up with the rat in his hand and go, one of these days I'm going to catch one of you little motherfuckers, and I'm going to eat you for lunch and all this <gasps> shit. And he was fucking, he was tough. But Mr. Martini was a reputation that Mr. Martini caught you. He'd fuck you to death and then kill you. <laughs> so all the kids, you were scared of Mr. <laughs> of Martini. Of course. So we would set him up with traps. <laughs> we would fuck with him with traps. Oh, yeah, like if he passed it past the corner, you throw a fucking stick at him. I mean, we had Mr. Martini tortured. That's crazy. And then other kids from the block would come on, and I would make them go in front of Mr. Martini's house. It was house. like a dare, yeah. I would go, let's go play stoop ball in front of Mr. Martini's house. <laughs> That's when you slam the ball the off the stairs. Stoop ball, step oh, ball? Must say that. No, stoop ball is when you hit the ball off the stairs yeah, and it step bounces ball. out. You have to catch it for a single, a double. So we would play stoop ball, and he would yeah. lose his fucking mind. He would come out and say, what did I just tell you, little motherfuckers? So my mother had a legwa, and this other thing. A legwa is the thing that you put by the door, and you're supposed to put candies in it and silver coins and pennies. Is it for, like, luck or yeah, something? Yeah, okay. luck. So I would take a handful of change. <laughs> and in those days, those little poor white kids, they'd kill a motherfucker for a quarter. <laughs> Because it was a soda for a quarter. That was they me, kill yeah. A so I would tell them, come here, guys. You guys want to make a quarter? And they would go, yeah. And I would throw the quarter into Mr. Martini's basement. And they would know that you weren't allowed. And they would jump the fence. <laughs> 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 then Mr. Martini would come out and hit with a stick and shit. <laughs> with their PF fangs on or whatever. You don't know how called. many kids would come back to me beat up. I love and go, that. You motherfucker, you trapped me. <laughs> Mr. Martini I just beat got me fucked up by Mr. And Martini. I didn't get a quarter and shit. <laughs> I would just take new people and throw a quarter over there and make them jump over. And then one day, like, I tortured Mr. Martini 
for about two years. It was like a slow, and oh. the summers every day. And this is in Jersey? This or? is 205 West 88th Street. Oh, okay. So if we were 205, he had to be like 198. Okay. He was on the right-hand side, and we were on the left-hand side going towards Central Park. And, dog, we would just hang across his house <laughs> and say shit. So you, we couldn't hang in front of your house. Right. So now we cross the street, and that territory in front of his house on the street, we created that game that's like pool, but only you play it with like coins. Yeah. You play, and you have to go through circles, number one, number oh, two, yeah, number yeah. three, number four. I forgot the four, name of that. Number Shoot. five. And what you Dead did box. was you removed the circle Dead thing box. from the chair. Dead yeah. box. And he didn't like that either. <sighs> And then there was once a day in the summer where the trees would get refilled with dirt balls. Shit balls? No, dirt balls. So it would be balls that were just made of dirt. Oh, It was okay. just dirt that was compressed, and they would plant new trees and put those dirt balls around. Listen, you could throw them at people, and they'd just blow up. It would just be dirt when you got hit with it. That's amazing. On that day, it was Mr. Martini Day. Like You know how you have like National Donut Day? Yeah. National Secretary's Day? Whenever those trees got filled up, you knew to go outside that you were going to bombard Mr. Martini at some point of the day. That's amazing. So we started bombarding him with the fucking dirt balls at first, little <laughs> by little, pa 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 pa, and we'd run away and he chases. And then one winter, I remember hitting him with like a fucking like a Kennedy assassination of snowballs. Like four of us <laughs> got together and he got hit with snowballs from every fucking direction. But I had my PF flies on. I knew I could get away with them. Yeah, you and fast. I ran, and I ran this motherfucker all the way to Spanish Harlem, 88th <laughs> Street. Holy down shit. Down to Broadway. And then after like maybe 90th Street, we just started walking. And it was getting dark out. Like this is how. So long, he's still falling. You're, you're this walking. is how long the Holy joint was. Shit. We started torturing him when it was daylight. Yeah. And we ran so far and so long that when we were coming back on Broadway, it was already starting to get dark. I'll never forget this. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was Christmas time. And these kids think playing Fortnite's fun. It had to be like eight of us or seven of us that eluded Mr. Martini. And at that time, we weren't giving each other high fives. We were just walking back going, fuck, fuck him. him. We got him. And on the corner of 88th Street, there was a photography store. And right there, some guys sold Christmas trees. I will never forget this. And we're walking, 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 and as about we're gonna make the left onto 88th Street to walk to our prospective buildings. Mm -hmm. Something made me look, I saw the tree jiggle a little bit. <sighs> and I looked at the tree, <laughs> and I saw Mr. Martini's hand, look at this fucking guy. Mr. Martini's hand, put his hand through the tree, opened it up, he's like, I got you. <gasps> and then we all ran fucking home. That, somebody was asking me a couple weeks ago, like what was the, like, when I look at Mercy now... A Jew coming out of a Christmas tree has got to be like, frightening. It was fucking... He was dressed in the black, and he chased us. And I still remember hitting my building and running up the stairs. I didn't even have <laughs> time to take the elevator. You probably didn't even and touch didn't a stop, stair. And I didn't stop yeah. at three. Because I knew that there was another staircase uh, on the other side of the... So every you floor had two, a sta two yeah. staircases. So I ran them up to, like, the sixth floor. Then I hit the staircase and got up at three and went to my house unsafe, and he never fucked with me again. But that day I knew Mr. Martini was going to kill one of us. Like, I knew it eventually yeah, he was going to Yeah, if you kept snap. poking this bear. Weren't you like six or five? Six. Seven. seven but that was what you did back in the day. You stayed five, out all day, all day and fucked with people. All day. We had something called shit balls. I think they're called ginkgo balls for real. But I, I used to mess with Bobby Lee. This was part of the reason he got mad at me. But they fall out of the tree, and they smell like shit. My mom was like, if you go over there, just burn your clothes. Don't even come home. Like, because it would stay on you. So... One day I was out there and these Asian ladies were picking it up. And I'm like, what are you doing with that? And she goes, oh, we make a soup. I said, what the fuck? They're putting shit balls in their food. Like, it freaked me out. So when I met Bobby Lee, I'm like, do you eat shit balls? And he got so mad at me. <laughs> he talked to me for like about? a year. No. Know no, nobody knows what the fuck. <laughs> Is that why you don't eat Chinese food? Yeah, at all. Because you don't of eat that. Chinese food? At all. Nope. Really? No way. Never. Not, not what I saw. Fuck that. <laughs> and then my, my old boyfriend in high school, his dad used to like run Chinatown. I'm not sure what he did, but they used to always take us in the back of the restaurants. Was and he I'd be Chinese? Like, no. No. I'm not allowed to do that. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm like that fought in Korea. It's disrespectful. So, no, I'm teasing, but we, uh, he was an Italian guy. 
and <coughs> his name was Mario, naturally. And uh, we, his dad, we would go see his dad. I don't know what he did up there, but he had some kind of connection or in. I think he was a loan shark. I'm not sure. So we would go and we would go in the back. And my Mario loved it. He'd be like, get this, get that. And I'd just be sitting there like nauseous. Like, there's shit balls in there. Get me out of here. I hated it. So I never ate Chinese food. I don't eat seafood either. I'm like weird. No seafood, no, no shrimp, seafood, no fish. Nothing. Nothing. Nope. Nope. No, mm-mm. no, because the fishing. My dad used to take my brothers fishing, and then they would cut the fish open, like they throw the eyes at me and shit, take the teeth out. Look at his teeth, yeah. Here's his dick. I'm like, what? Fish have dicks? So you like, only eat chicken and meat? Pretty much. I didn't eat chicken for a long time. <laughs> I think that's why I'm skinny. I guess. I don't I eat like, nothing. I eat I, peanut butter and jelly. I don't. I love the concept of cooking. I really love and yeah. appreciate the concept of cooking. You don't appreciate good cooking to eat shit cooking. You know, you, you see what goes oh, yeah. in the preparation, the cutting, the seasoning. My mom's you a know, good cook. I, I'm, I got I'm, lucky. A, bur- I'm yeah. a firm believer. Like me and him go to a place that he gets the same fucking tacos every time. They're the worst tacos I've ever had because they don't season the fucking <laughs> beef. The carne asada that tastes like That's shit. That's gross. They don't season I the season beef. I season everything. It's just beef with lettuce, tomato on. And I could taste that. I don't want to taste beef with lettuce and tomato on it. I want to taste the fucking meat. Yeah. The carnitas are good. The okay. carnitas are good. I'm not a chicken taco guy, you know. Yeah. So, but my point is, if I had a cook, I wouldn't eat. Yeah. I tell you this, guys, sincerely. Chicken is the most disgusting fucking thing I've ever it, looked at in my life. Please don't. I didn't eat it I for 10 like years. Cut, it's the only thing I don't thing like I eat cutting now. chicken cutlets. I don't like dipping them i don't like flour on my fingers mm-hmm. you know i'm just so many things i agree I'm just with you not a when i when i cooked if i think if i really serious want to lose weight i have to cook because i won't because i don't like yeah. to see food in its natural disgusting <laughs> yeah. fucking steak you want to just eat the steak Sometimes, you don't want to know how the cow slaughter like yeah. the whole would you be a vegetarian i'm close no. man there's no. we there's weeks and months where I go without it because I'll get nauseous from something. A if steak you told me or today, burger. If you came to me today, like today I went to the heart doctor. Okay. And they did an EKG and they found an abnormality. And me and the doctor were laughing. It's nothing serious. He right. just wants to get a test out. But if he came to me today and said, Joey, you can't eat meat no more, I wouldn't be upset. Okay. Like the last seven years i've been training myself more and more to, to let get it go off meat yeah you know to get off meat because it's just it's just for this age yeah for this age i cannot go into morton's anymore like 15 years ago when i met Loved rogan it. yeah i could go into a fucking whatever steakhouse with joe and look at him and get the 16 ounce prime rib kill the potatoes kill the steak dip the bread take half of his appetizers, you know, <laughs> and go upstairs and go to sleep. Oh, I would yeah. feel something. You know, what you could eat at 20 is going to be completely different. What you could eat at oh, 40 my God, yeah. and when you could eat at 50. I know now, like, I can't eat meat after 8 o'clock at night. It's got to be like four ounces, something light. Mm. If I go to a steakhouse or somewhere with my wife for a date and I decide to eat meat, I eat half the portion at night. I cut it right in half and I give it to her. There's nothing I like more than. Listen. What do you like, fatty meat? Like um, no, I like steak. Like fillet, or you go with the other one. What's well, the other one? Ribeye. Yeah. Well, to get flavor, you need more fat to get the flavor. Yeah, see, I can I, I can only do the fillet, and I like it well done. Like I just went with Ari to fucking uh, the the place in New York. Uh, Luger's. Yeah. We oh, went, it's the we best. Went and fucking yeah. Whatever. Was it in Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. In Williamsburg. When you taste the meat. I know they spent time on this meat. What that's the hell's the name of it? Luger. Yeah, Peter, Peter, Peter Luger. Peter that's Luger. It, yeah. That's all you ever want from anything. Yeah. Is I want your distinct flavor. I haven't been there flavor. a long time. Yeah. yeah, I want your distinct flavor in this steak. Yeah, you can you taste it. You know, I it. want it. I could tell when I eat a piece of meat that you didn't put no effort on it. <sighs> you know, I don't know. Uh, chicken, same thing, you know. Yeah. But there's a extra things dry. you could do to chicken. Yeah. To give it that oomph. Yeah. Salmon, for example, is a hard thing to cook. I don't like it's that. Salmon. I cooked it once. It tastes like dick. It's the sauce you make <laughs> with the salmon to yeah. deviate that flavor. You, you know smell. what I'm saying? Yeah. I like I like uh, I like salmon. 
but I just can't eat a bagel lock sandwich. Oof. I need the cream cheese. I need something to tame that fishiness. Yeah, I don't like fish. Swordfish, when you hit the dark spots. It's I like, don't, please, it's like that's eating so a fish's gross. lung. <laughs> but, that's so gross hearing that. Like, but, you know, you have to, when you eat fish and meat, all that stuff, especially chicken, like I don't want to see it. And, and let me tell no. you something. I saw chicken go from the whole process. I'm a Santeria guy. Come on. So I see yeah, them oh come yeah, out. They hold them. They take the fucking feathers off. You got to pray them, over it first. Pray over it. Chop the head off, milk it, yeah. and then that night, that's what you're eating for dinner. And I would go, <laughs> I'm not eating that. I don't give a fuck. I was telling my wife the other day about something. When I got, you know, I pray for my daughter every day, and okay. I pray for my mother's soul because I can't believe I put my mother through what I put her through. We, we, we're having an issue at the house right now with okay. food and the baby. <laughs> we went to some other people's house on Saturday, and they told us when their daughter was three, Normal. She was the queen of sushi. Okay. And now she won't even eat sushi. When Mercy was two, she would eat the black part of the salmon, the bottom, and eat it like and chew on it. Black wow. beans, white rice, pork. Now she's six. That's adult and food it's where fucking, I come from. It's either chicken nuggets or spaghetti every night. She eats more spaghetti than a fucking guinea. I never seen a kid eat more fuck. My daughter loves spaghetti yeah, every night. All spaghetti, kids. spaghetti, 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 spaghetti. I told you the other day, I said, listen, man, you're growing, you're going to karate, you're swimming, you need protein. So we got to start fucking amping it up. Yeah. So you better start fucking eating. You got to so, sneak it in. So Monday night, there was a, a big bit. argument at the house. Yeah. Monday, her and the mother went at it. Okay. She ended up, she ended up going to bed at so 7 o'clock. The last thing you want to do is fight with Terry. My wife came into that room and she goes, she's in bed at 7 o'clock. Please. And my wife was so pissed, she went for a ride. She goes, I got to leave. And I went in there like at 7.30. I go, what's up? She she wouldn't even look at me. She was just stare, staring straight ahead. Because my mother, uh, Terry pulled my mother. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to eat? You don't get you don't nothing. Eat? Go to bed. No food, no dinner, and I'm throwing yep. away the donut. Because we stopped and got donuts after karate. So my wife fucking threw away the donut. There was an argument. There was yelling. <laughs> there was screaming. You yeah. got to stick to it, man. And Otherwise. I told, and I told Terry what I used to do. At that time, when I was six already, I had money in the back room. Yeah. So one day I was looking out a window, and I saw this company called Chicken Delight. And one day, me and my friends, there was a blimpy base. There was a pizza place, and down the block was this chicken place. But I just came from Cuba. I had never smelled anything like that. You could smell that chicken up the block. In Cuba, and one you would think you smell more. And one day I went to that chicken place. I must have been about five. And I walked in there, and I got a three-piece chicken. And it was delicious with the fucking French fries, the cur not the curly flies. Crinkle cut. Crinkle cut. Crinkle cut. And they give you a little package of jelly. And I used to dip the French fries in oh the grape God, jelly. Oh, my God, my nephew does I that. I used to dip the French fries. And then they give you a bun, and I would eat the bun. And oh. I loved it. So when my mother would cook those fucking tremendous Cuban meals, I would look at my mother and go, I'm not eating. And she would go, fine. Yeah. Go in your room. You're punished. And she'd be out there getting ready to go to her bar and shit. A couple of friends would be over. And next thing you know, you hear, bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother and her friends would go, who's that at the door? And I go, it's for me. And I would walk right <laughs> no. past my mom. Yes, I would. And who's who? who is it? And I'd say, chicken delight, don't cook tonight. Because I was just learning how to speak English. So I thought I was cool. So I would look at my mom and go, don't cook tonight. Go chicken delight. And I would get the chicken delight. And I would walk past her with a Tahitian treat. They had they delivered Tahitian treat, the soda. No. Oh, it was like a fruit punch in a can. Ooh. And I would oh. walk past my mother, and I could hear my heart, my mother's heart just going. <laughs> like, I just cooked you a traditional a Cuban dinner. And I'm, I'll never forget the first time she came in there. She had, like, tears in her eyes. She's like, oh, you miserable son of a bitch. Now I know why you. <laughs> Now I know you're like you, that filthy. Now I know why your father died to get away from oh. you because you eat that shit. Look at you, you're gonna eat die. That Metagon she shit. went off on yeah. me the first oh time. My God. Slammed the door, spit on the floor. She did the oh, whole yeah. oh, thing. Spit on the uh, floor. Oh, is a de puta. How dare you eat that chicken when I cooked a beautiful meal for you? So she I got to the point Who where Who paid for it? Me, because I had a ten bucks. Bed. It was like four dollars and a dollar tip. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I had that guy over the house four nights a week. My mother got pissed. 
pissed. Then she just stopped. She goes, I'm not going to compete with this shit. Yeah. How much chicken? How much do you crave Cuban food now? I would eat it every meal if I could. (laughs) Well, we don't know. But you you, you change your taste buds. Change. I have a nephew. He didn't eat anything. I'm telling you, nothing. He's skin and bones, this kid. He hated every single thing. He would go to the bathroom. It would come out white. He had nothing in him. It was the weirdest. We were like, you got to eat. And finally, like, he's obsessed with my other nephew, little Jimmy, who plays for the Minnesota Twins. Very exciting. Uh, but he, he's obsessed with him because he's a baseball player and he's big and he's athletic, you know. So Jimmy was like, hey, well, if you're not going to eat, like, he would have to mess with him. And the other, uh, my other nephew, Brandon, too, he wouldn't eat either. So Jimmy, they lie to him and tell him that uh, chicken is pork because <laughs> he won't eat chicken because he got sick on chicken nuggets. So they're like, no, it's pork. And he's like, all right. And he eats it. But you have to lie to these kids to get them to eat. And we have to FaceTime with little Jimmy to get him to, to get Conrad to eat. Yeah, I was hot. Crazy shit. I now he's getting crazy. better. He's seven now. So it's a little bit better. And I was popping it. Because I wanted to be, the other side of the coin was I wanted to be American. Yeah. So I thought by the more American food I ate, I'd become American. Hot dogs on the corner, sad bread. Fuck. <laughs> I would inhale 22 of those fucking things. Oh, my God. You know what I loved when I was a kid? Not ashamed to admit it. Swanson's TV dinners. <coughs> Same. Oh, the Salisbury steak. My mom used to get so With the apple mad cobbler in the middle. I could eat 20 of those things. And then the superhero line came she out was with. so mad at me for that. Swanson still makes, right? The yeah, big, of course. The big man. Yeah. The chicken wasn't bad. So salty. You could feel oh, yeah, your you'll blood die. pressure. You'll die. Like, yeah, you'll your, die. Your shoulders go up. You're like, oh, something's happening. Yeah, your yeah, heart yeah. starts caving in. No, no. That if you eat it now, you. fucking I haven't eaten that it. shit in 40 years. Every once in a while, I'll get like I'll a craving. I'll tell you what I do hate, a chicken pot pie. Those a chicken pot pie. Nasty as motherfucking That is gross. But I, the the butcher in my mother's neighborhood, they make them fresh, and it's delicious. I would get them in prison, and I would eat yeah, I just can't the eat chicken. the fake shit. I would yeah. eat the top off the shell and the chicken, the carrots and the peas and that fucking ugat sauce. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not eating that shit. And I don't know what the sauce was. But no, I never know these what the guys. Sauce was. It's it's, it's an sauce, Italian it? butcher, and they make it beautiful. They make it great. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, I don't know. What it tastes like it. chicken alfredo almost in the pastry i'll tell you what i with always peas liked. and ca- carrots i'll tell you what i always like since day one this is why it shocks me about chinese Eshpen. i can't live without chinese food that's amazing i love it and this shit out here is fucking god awful god awful andrew has a new one off to tell you about green it. apple that's the one i if don't know where that is it's got the, the garlic fried rice that might the be heaven it. chicken and the and the chinese filet mignon I don't because he's it. a Chinese guy. The egg like roll you. is, yeah, is yeah. not good. <laughs> the dumplings are not bad. Yeah. The spare ribs are not good. I love that this is all about food. <laughs> yeah, no, no. A couple things are good there. You just gotta yeah, watch yeah. what you eat there. That's it. Listen, people don't eat pork out here. So spare oh. ribs, brisket, all that shit don't hold out here. But it doesn't thing about um Chinese food. My sister used to order it all the time, it drove me crazy. It was what's it called? Um one time one time. okay so then you take it out i go what's in the middle she's like it's pork but it was like a little brown and then for some reason red on the know, tip you don't want to know what what's in the there fuck is that i told genius over here he would go to koreatown amongst fucking everybody's looking for a cat they're everybody's tra- got a poster listen, with a missing cat that's right and he's like the dumpling they're trying great. to don't kill us don't eat that bro. shit don't eat the dumplings unless you know even the they're place getting us I eat back for something even the yeah. place i what it is is like a hot dog the meat inside the dumpling at a Chinese restaurant. I don't eat hot, like hot dogs dog. either. It's whatever they don't use. Oh, we got an eyeball. We got a chicken foot. Come we, got, on, man. we got a lizard spine. We throw it in there. We a mix it up with some fucking spine. chicken. And they tell you whatever the fuck they want. They tell you I can't whatever believe they want. that. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. You've never heard that. about that Listen, shit before. I can because feelings. when we would be in the back of that restaurant with my, my ex's father, I'd be like, holy shit. There, I don't think there was a sink to wash your hands. I don't. There was chickens running around. I got arrested. Cats one time. running around. I got arrested one time. One time. And I was getting transferred from Hackensack to where I got a Bergen County Jail mm-hmm. to go get arraigned at some other jail. <coughs> and I hadn't eaten. Okay. I hadn't eaten. <laughs> And I was a gentleman when I got arrested. I didn't know no big deal. Gave my name. We talked. And the cop that was transferring me, I'm in the back of the car. And I'm like, listen, man, 
you're going to take me to this jail and they're going to put me in a cell. And there's not going to be any food. And I got to be honest with you, I haven't eaten since like fucking five o'clock. It's like nine o'clock or one o'clock. I hadn't eaten. Right, it was, was late. Yeah. I was like trying to, I was starting to lose a little bit. I go, yeah, do me a favor. We're going to drive past Chance Dragon. And do you mind if I stop in there? My, I, there weren't felonies, there were misdemeanors. Yeah. It was possession of uh, a stolen prop, uh, weapons to uh -huh. you break in, you know, that's it. Yeah. And the guy's like, you eat a chance. And I go, that's the best Chinese restaurant around here. Let me tell you a little story. It was a couple of years ago, the detective's bureau, there was a safe cracker, and he was cracking safes. And he was going all around the area. And the, we had good information that he did rest. That's what he was doing. He was doing restaurants. Mm -hmm. So he goes, under our estimations, we figured Chan's was going to be next. So we sat in the restaurant one night. And we waited till they closed. And when they turned off the lights, we had to turn the lights on after 15 minutes because the rats were so big no, in there. No, I can't. And you know what, Eleanor? Till this day. And you I, still eat this. I still eat that. I make believe I don't know what I'm fucking eating <laughs> because it's so good. If it's somebody's cat, I could taste the tears and the salt and the, you could taste the tissue Like this paper. cat was loved. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, get, you get warm. They like, didn't it's like, like this a, cat. You it's can like tell the difference. Coke. You get euphoric and shit. But <laughs> oh, no, that's no, so no. Gross. All, you know, you, you pray for the best at these places and you try to. Listen, I would never eat pulled pork from somewhere. There's just. That's not my thing. There's foods that if you eat out, you're I a like fucking pork idiot. sandwiches. You deserve to get food yeah. poisoning. You deserve to what's coming with you. Yeah. There's stuff I won't eat. I look at the people. I refuse to eat it. Like, I just refuse. I'm as picky as you are. Yeah. Seafood, you got to be careful with it. So you're going to eat seafood at a fast fucking place joint? You're going to get fucking sick. I love you, when people order it at a diner. If you go to Jack like, in the Box oh. or a diner and yeah. eat a piece of salmon, you're going to get do. fucking sick. You're going to uh, get fucking sick. You know? Trout, you got to eat. What's the, one, what's the one my mom likes? What's Attic. Almondine. No, it's some kind of, it's the bottom of the, it's the worst kind to eat. Cod. Mm, that's not the word. I forget. Some fish. She always orders it everywhere we go. I'm like, that's the worst. It's like a vacuum cleaner fish. Yeah, it's the the bottom feeder they call it. it listen, not trout. Think, that's think, what think fish of what, is. Think of what fish really swim. I if can't. We, do you, no, if we really as humans, never thinking about if it. If you're a, <laughs> if you're a human and you really sit there and say to yourself, what am I really eating? At Grouper all, at all levels. At all levels. Mm-hmm. Whether it's beef, how it was kept, you know, when they did that movie uh, about the McDonald's chain. And the McDonald's oh yeah, yeah, soda, yeah. They tested it. I remember <clears throat> reading about it years later that when they test a hamburger patty from one of those fat foods joints, mm -hmm. there's a percentage of fecal, fecal matter in there. Please, that's well known. If you, yeah. if you don't know that going in, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, you know that. It's you know filled. what's going in. Yeah, you know. When I read that whole thing about... Uh, if I go there, I'm going there to hurt myself. When I heard about the whole thing about Vegas, I read about this 30 years ago. What do you mean? And Paul Castellano's father was a butcher. Okay. Okay. Paul Castellano's father was a butcher. Paul Castellano was cousins with Carlo Gambino. Mm -hmm. And his son, Paul, turned out to be the, the, the boss of the yeah. Gambinos that John Gotti shot. It was common knowledge in one of their books... They wrote the whole scam of how in the 50s they got, after Bugsy opened it up, they cut a deal with the National Butchers Association or whatever in New York. Whenever your meat is on a shelf for more than five days, you don't lose. We'll mm -hmm. pick it up when we deliver the meat and we'll give you 50% of the dollar on it. So if a store bought that meat, what they did immediately with that meat was take it back to a warehouse, pack it on ice, and ship it to Las Vegas. Once it got to Las Vegas, they cut it out, and they dipped it in a chemical. I read this. Whether it's right or wrong, it makes sense. It does. I, the chemicals it keep it chemical, alive which longer, keep it alive. if you will. It keeps yeah. it pink for three more fucking right. days. And then that's the steak and eggs you eat for one ninety nine. Right. When you go to Vegas and you're like, <laughs> I'm eating so a steak good. for 99 cents. <laughs> I got over. <laughs> Look at me. Fucking idiots. When you go to your room and you get up in the middle of the night at four and you go to pee 
you get that little runs, and then a piece of shit comes out. The runs isn't sufficient to make you think. Yeah. You follow me? So yeah, no, that's I agree. That's what the chemical like, does to you. But we put so much in so many so foods. So when I read yeah. that at an early age, I knew. You know, when you see those guys in New York City, and you're, and you're swallowing down those hot dogs on the corner, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you're swallowing down those hot dogs in the corner, you know, look at that water. Yeah. You know, every time they get their hands murky, dirty, yeah. every time they get their hands dirty, they take an ice cube yeah. and they throw it in the water. They take some of that hot water and rub it in their hands, and they, you know, you have to. They assume, all have pink eye. I don't know why to, you would go there. You have to assume yeah. these things. Yeah, so I agree. When, when you go to a restaurant, you're judging it by that. Don't get me wrong. You go to Peter Luger and get a bad clam. You go to uh, sure uh, legal seafood. Legal seafood and eat a bad oyster or yeah. a bad clam. It happens, but uh, you know the higher percentages. You know, like that they're, they're not gonna they inspect their shit daily. Yeah. They pay a guy ten an hour to, to open up each chuck, check it out, smell them and yeah. check them out, look at the lobsters, make sure the lobsters don't have the algae on the shelf. <laughs> Did you ever eat like the hot nuts in New York? I haven't been in New York in a while, so I don't know if they I have never it. I love the smell of it, but I've never eaten them. The they still have them. I was just there three That's weeks creepy. ago. They still have them. Ask yourself a question. It's a great smell. Eats hot nuts. I don't know. No, yeah. no, I love hot no. nuts normally. No. no, I'm just kidding. You I don't know, I don't just, get the hot to, nut thing you have to look at the animal you're dealing with exactly and you have to decide yeah you know, lucky for me i got food poisoning a couple of years ago for, and i can't even blame it on them but you it blame- seemed like a 24-hour food virus thing what well who do you blame them what do you mean like if you got sick from a restaurant i, blamed, I ate there 20 times and i never got sick before and then ah, one time i went okay. the taco stand by the haha Across the street oh, okay. from the haha next to the sushi place, mm-hmm. that place, and, and then sushi, for example. When I first, yeah, you when can I first get real got here, sick. yeah, the biggest place was the mall where Weight Watchers is on Ventura, mm-hmm. across from the burger place. Mm-hmm. What's the name of the burger place? Stout. Stout. Across from Stout on the second floor was all you could eat sushi and wheels, and all those fucking guys would come up there and go, "Oh, it's great!" And I'll never forget going up there the first time and going. I'm not eating this shit. Yeah, that's not great. I was a poor fucking comic, and I was like, I'm not eating this shit. I was that smart. I, yeah, I got yeah. back in the car and went right back to Wendy's and got my 99 cents <laughs> junior burger, Square my bowl hamburger. of chili for the $5. Yeah. It was yeah, worth yeah. it. That fucking sushi place, they had sushi waiting out there for five minutes and ten. <laughs> that's where it ends with me. When I go to a restaurant, I just went somewhere. I'm not going to mention the name, about two weeks ago, where I sent the order back. You know why? Because it's flu season. You got my dish in your fucking hand, and you stop and start talking to some from, from fucking other waiter and having oh. a conversation. And here's my food, and here's I, your I fucking, fucking breath. Hate I made the that. guy send it back. Go, dog, you were talking all my food for 10 minutes. He just froze. Go, next time you have somebody's food in your hand, never bring it to the table, and then yeah. have the conversation later. They had a two-minute conversation with my food. Like, if you're saying, go get table, whatever, and you turn your head, that's fine. But if you It was a chick and a white dude trying to be kid. Oh, fuck that. I'm a a food server a long time. And she stopped and kept talking to the guy with I would have fired both of them. And I was, and I told her, I told her, come here. You talked over my fucking clamps for fucking 10 minutes. (laughs) Go bring me some new ones, bro. She just looked at me. And she knew not to say a word because I would have won with the fucking manager. Oh yeah, bring my food to the table. Don't you don't have to talk to nobody. Yeah, just bring my food to the table. Just bring uh, it to I the table. I agree. A Do thousand not stop, per- especially if thousand, you're paying top dollar. There's a thousand things I look at. I used to go to a restaurant, Cuban place. I love Cuban food. Mm-hmm. You know why I stopped going there? Why? Because the windows were dirty. I know exactly. If which you one can't you're wipe, about. if you can't <laughs> wipe the windows yeah. where the door is, mm-hmm. I can't eat at your place. Yeah, it's that simple. I can't eat it. Your place. It shouldn't look like a that, shack. That's a detail that cannot be missed by a bus boy, an employee, a bartender, a waiter. There's certain things that cannot be missed. Yeah. That I will fire you on because that's detail. That's yeah. part of the detail. I cannot. So not one person that you have working in this establishment can notice that these windows were dirty. I can't do business with you. <laughs> I love that. And that's it. You have nine oh, losers agree. working for you. Because not one person took a look and took initiative to get a newspaper and a piece of Windex and just go like this and wipe the fucking thing down. It's seconds. It takes, it takes seconds, seconds. So when you go to into, keep a customer. And I'm gonna tell you something. Nine out of ten, ten kitchens you go in 
are not going to be A ratings. No. Especially while you're moving and shoving. A you kitchen's know, nasty. But let's be honest. You know how many times I've dropped a piece of fucking steak on the floor and I got 10 cats and I'll pick that motherfucker up and eat I'm it. I'm never coming you know? to your house to no. eat. Uh, yeah. sometimes, you know, sometimes <laughs> you know, it fell on the floor for a second. I what know. Do? My sister in law. But meanwhile, you blew some guy in Minneapolis that you didn't know. That's not you. True. Not you. Oh, I'm I just thought saying. you saw me. I was we like, have to what? all be in perspective Joey. here of what's really no, going on. No, I agree. On. Yeah. But when you go to most restaurants during action, shit's going to happen. Shit's going to happen. You know, a piece of hair is going to fall out of somebody's hair. I understand all that shit. There's certain things that I don't understand happening. Yeah. That's why. When I sit at the table and I can feel shit under the table, we got to go. Yeah. We got to uh. go. We got to go. If I could feel dirt on the table, not one of you. Yeah. And then I look at the towel they use. Yeah. If it's just a towel from the counter that they've been using all day, get up. Oh, It's those little yeah, signs. So I understand, like, when you eat anything, you know, what if when I'm picking the lettuce, I'm picking my nose, oh, I'm okay. picking the fucking lettuce. Jaw throw it's up all right the here. same. I literally will So throw this up. is why you have to think to yourself, that at every level you're eating something that's fucked up. If yeah. you really sit down and think about it, you won't eat at all. You'll become one of those oh, Africans I know it. I'm with close. flies all over I'm you. I'm telling you I'm so close to that. I skeeve a lot of shit. I'm that's the... what we call it from these East Coast. Same, yeah. Skeeve. Skeevats. I skeeve yeah. fucking food. Uh, I skeeve I, people I, I told I told Lee, when I first moved here and you're a broke comic, there wasn't a week that I didn't go to, what's the Arab place? On Gower, on Hollywood Boulevard, I'll be, oh. I'll be here. I'll be gone. I'll be, I'll be I'll not be, going there. I'll be for sure. Whatever. I don't know how many times. I'll be me sure. And, yeah, that was his name. No, Ali. Ali name. was here. Ali oh, was here. Okay. Then you call the place, and he goes, "Ali there." And he goes, "No, no, Ali. Ali was here." <laughs> <laughs> Ali was here. What kind of food is it? Middle Mediterranean. Oh, Mediterranean. The chicken is to die for. Like I used to go there three times a week. Josh Wolf. Fucking Mitch Hedberg, wow. Stan, all was of it us. cheap? Was yeah, it, oh. on Gower. Okay, on Gower and Hollywood Boulevard. If you make a left on Hollywood and Gower, it's in that disgusting strip. Yeah, road. I would never go in there. I would never mm -hmm. let them give me the hummus. The hummus was like I beige, hummus. yeah, with like curry. Hummus is beige. It's fucking disgusting. All that shit, like that stuff there, you'll die even harder. Like if you get What's, that shit, that's bad. David Tell calls it ISIS peanut butter. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> It's disgusting. It's fucking disgusting <laughs> to even think of that. Like my neighbor, you get a smack in the hand if you even brought that oh, to a party. Yeah, if like I've you showed never up with seen hummus, it. No, God, no. I didn't see guacamole until I moved to California. We I never love, had that. I love avocado. Never in my life have no, I, I seen avocado. an avocado in Philadelphia. Cub see, Cubans are grown with real avocados. See, you mm -hmm. guys out here in Miami and Florida, you get those midget. Mexican avocados. Go to Miami. I don't eat them. That's just, you don't eat avocado at no. all? No. Oh, my God. A little sliced avocado on a turkey and Swiss sandwich with some mayo and some tomato. Oh. Good googly moogly. No, really? I, I've never seen it. I drove past that place today. When what I was place? coming back from the heart doctor. Oh. The place that makes that sandwich on fucking Hollywood Boulevard. That you love? Oh, okay. A little avocado, a little turkey and Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> nice tomatoes, a little shredded lettuce. I don't eat turkey. You don't eat turkey or either? Swiss. Really? <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, I'm the worst so eater. I'm the you cheapest eat? date. Right, what do you eat for breakfast? Ever in fruit. Like I'll, sometimes I'll have an egg. Like a. I got back into eggs. It took. I was out of that for ten years. Uh, I'll just like scramble an egg. You know. No toast. No. It. It. Uh, if I'm at my mom's. She'll usually throw in toast bacon. or bagels. If they, bacon, no, unless my mom makes it. Because if you go to a restaurant and you order bacon, they usually microwave it. It's fucking disgusting. Microwave, it becomes rubbery. So I got turned off about 10 years ago for bacon. What do you eat for lunch? Usually uh, <laughs> a power bar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And what's for dinner? Uh, I love pasta. I eat a lot of pasta. And I'll usually put, like, now I'm trying to put vegetables more the past year because I realized there was an entire year where I didn't eat anything green. Because I'm terrible. I'm terrible at that. Like, I'll eat peanut butter and jelly. I'll eat peanut butter and jelly on crackers. I'll eat, uh, like, chicken. I'll bake chicken and cut it up. And then now I'll throw vegetables on it. But before, I was just used to eat that with pasta. By its, like, no green How at about all. spaghetti sauce? I like sometimes marinara, certain ones. How I don't make it. At how about you? Lasagna? If I make it, if my mom makes it, I eat it. 
I, God forbid I learn how to make it like she does and make it for myself out here. If a guy here, takes you on a date to an Italian restaurant. I get chicken parm. I'll get uh, pasta marinara with chicken or uh, chicken Alfredo. I like that one sometimes. It's got to be done right, though. Hamburgers? I like hamburgers. Okay. Cheeseburgers. Steaks? Like, mm-hmm. Okay. So you're Steak and potato. Yeah. yeah. The you're simple. There. Yeah. Steak and potato. I'm a really, really cheap date, just in case anybody's looking. But no seafood at all. <laughs> no seafood. Since a young age. Just, you just. No, my dad would bring the fish home and put it in the drain board. Like, it was just gross. It always made me sick. And the boy, I've, I feel like I, I put fish and bees together because I was always getting stung by a bee while they were fishing because I was grossed out. So I would, like, wander off. And that I get I mean, surrounded really, by you bees. Really, you really have to think. I am a little slow. Again, I'm a little messed again, up. Again, now let's get away from the beef and chicken. There's I mean, nothing else for me. Think about what's really, really in the ocean. Grilled cheese. I like grilled cheese. Think about <laughs> what's really, really, really in the ocean. Yeah. Didn't they do a test on the beach in Santa Monica and there was like fucking drugs in there? Oh, yeah. There's, there's needles coming needles up. All shit. kinds of shit. You know, so you have this wildlife. I mean. I know we're covered with 60% water or whatever. I've never been in are. the water out here, have you? In the beach? Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't do it. Jersey, I'll do it all day, Wildwood. But... Yeah, that's why you glow in the dark. <laughs> because you swam down the Jersey Shore <laughs> with the radioactive shit. <laughs> you come out with a mess. Let me ask you something. How long did you work at the store before you decided to come up on stage? 12 years. And throughout that time... It wasn't that you wanted to do stand up or nothing. Never. That's why Mitzi and I got along so well because I don't want stage time. I wasn't. I didn't go help her for something in return. You remember when all the mooks used to show up at her house? Mitz, let me help you. You know, with this today. Cause all they wanted was stage time. Some of them were robbing her. I'm not going to mention any names, but they were there all the time, using her phone, calling New York. You know, or just taking her food looking for jewelry i'm like the fuck this woman's like sick but so uh, she trusted me because i didn't want anything from her like stage time so after freddie died is when everything kind of went haywire in my head and i was like what are you doing so it was kind of like a this is your life moment and freddie always was like you should be doing stand-up we could go on the road together and i'm like you just misery loves company you know i'd always throw it back in his face and then after he passed, I I told Mitzi, I said, I'm going to do this one woman show. She's like, oh, honey, that's yeah, great. Do it in the belly room, you know. So I did. And Andrew came to see it. And he was like, you're doing stand up, stupid. And I'm like, no, no, no. This is a one woman show. I'm going to talk about my family. I'm going to tell all these crazy stories about South Philly. Like I always joke about South Philly is like flint michigan but we didn't complain about the water we just kept drinking it so that's why we're a little off you know what i mean like i would tell all these crazy stories about my friends and stuff and he was like no it's stand up and then he took me on the road with him and then i got booed off the stage that was pretty bad <laughs> in new york uh and he andrew fired me for like a year because he was like you got to see if you're really serious about this like a lot of people get into it and they think, oh, it's easy. Everybody does stand up. All you got to do is get a podcast and, you know, then they'll give you stage time. That's not how it works. You really got to be dedicated to it. And Andrew wanted to see if I was like just fucking around or really into this. And then I would go on stage every night anywhere I could for a little, a little over a year. And then he had me re-showcase, if you will, in um, Vegas. When Andrew... Told you couldn't go on the road no more. Were you angry with him? No. Did you see where he was coming from? I, I did because in New York it was so bad when they booed me off the stage. So bad. And when I, I'm I'm telling you, we were at the Westbury Music there, the Theater. So it's in the round. So people are hating you from the back, the front, the sides. I'm sweating so bad. Like my half bra slid down, looked like I had tumors on my stomach. Like it was brutal. And I'm trying to get lines out. Nothing's happening. They're boo, fuck you, Philly stink, Philly, blah, blah, blah. Just because I said I'm from Philly. You know what I mean? So, And I remember catching eyes with my sister Karen, who drove two and a half hours to come see me do stand-up, you know, three months into stand-up, pretty much. I'm in front of all these people. 
And she was all excited. And I remember locking eyes with her. And she looked at me like, what do you want to do? I'm going to fight this whole fucking room. I'll fight everybody in here. And we look exactly alike. We're 10 years apart. <laughs> so I remember being like, all right, my sister's here. Calm down. Just figure this out. Wrap it up. I think I did five or six minutes, even though they were booing the whole fucking time. Uh, I got off and Andrew was like, fuck them. I'm not going on. I saw how hurt he got. Like, he's like, that's my family. You. You just hurt my family. You don't know who she is to me. So he wasn't going to go on. And then he went on and beat the shit out of that crowd. He had the best set I've ever seen him have. And I went upstairs and cried for a little bit and then came down and watched him. And people in the audience were like, oh, we just wanted to, uh, you know, see Andrew. We weren't we didn't really care about you. Sorry about the booing. And I'm like, sorry, I'll <laughs> fucking kill you. Like, you have no idea what that did to me. But all that did was propel me. Because now it pissed me off. You're saying I'm not good enough or whatever, you know, and I couldn't handle it. Andrew's a purist when it comes oh, to Oh, absolutely. Comedy. Joe Rogan's a purist when mm -hmm. it comes to comedy. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you something, as much of a piece of shit I am, I'm a purist when it comes Abs to comedy. Absolutely. If I had to speak my mind about what I really think of comedy, a lot of people would not be happy with me. Okay? <laughs> it's true. Because I don't like a lot of the nonsense that goes on. And there's but too much of it. more power to them. I was always trying to strive to be a fucking comedian. So I know when somebody's faking the fuck. Absolutely. I don't even have to watch this set. When somebody comes to me and says, I've been doing stand-up for four years. and I, Listen, I've heard this story <laughs> a thousand times. I was that story. Mm -hmm. So... Don't come on to me with your bullshit. Yeah. I'll hear about you. If you're real, we'll I'll hear it. Hear. We'll hear. That's right. We'll Be hear about it. Because all the years at the comedy store, my love and appreciation grew a thousand times bigger than ever. Like, I, that's why I would say, I, I can't be a I'm not a comic. I'm a fucking waitress. I'm not one of you people. Like, I thought you had to have this as a kid. I want to be a stand up. You know what I mean? Like, every comic I talked to that I loved, every comic that was genuine and stood out, you know, the the Judy Golds, the Dom Iraras, the Joe Diaz, the, the Joe Rogans, you know, all these guys that came through that Brian Holtzman that that really got Doug Stanhope. Like, you watch him, you're like mesmerized. And there was thousands of comics in between them but they didn't stand out they were just people i know from the comedy store you know they were trying to milk it if you will so uh, the ins and outs of comedy i knew you knew you knew i just didn't think i wanted it now i don't know what i do without it which is it's 12 years now i'm 12 and 12 isn't that crazy 24 years, and you watched it watch people watched grow it. Watch yes. people write jokes from day one. Bomb. I watched watch, Freddie Bomb. I watched watch so many people. People come in with heat. Yeah. Disappeared. Like people just dis a fucking peer. Like they didn't even exist. Uh, There's so many of them. We watched my first ex fiance was a booking agent. Right. That's so right. we watched. He, I went on the road with Chris Rock, watched him at the store when he was doing Bring the Pain. We watched him at the store do it. Then we went to Riviera, Sharipa's room, and he was building it there. So I hung out with Billy for the weekend, you know, and watched Chris. And then in uh, Jersey at Rascals, I watched him build that that amazing, one of my favorite specials. It's definitely in the top five. Bring the pain, Chris Rock. It's tremendous. But when you, what I'm telling you, I watched him bomb and not bomb and take a joke build a joke, fix a joke, repair a joke, whatever word you want to use. Like, it was phenomenal. Like that, like Mitzi always says, comedy store is a college. And she would say, well, I went to the best college, honey. Because I 12 years, I got to study that. I mean, I should be a brain surgeon it's, it's, 12 years, but. I was, I had to go and, you know, I got to double check everything. So I check all my prices online to make sure the club isn't <laughs> fucking with me. And I went on the improv website mm -hmm. and I went to click on about two months ago and I was high and I just, I was at night and I was killing time, you know, and I was going through the comics that were going there and I found out, I see all these Instagram. Oh, that's a fact. And all these YouTube people. Yep. And it's like, I get it. It's a and check. No power to them. It's a check. But where I'm coming from. It you, hurts. You ain't got, it doesn't hurt me. Doesn't hurt me at all. Doesn't hurt my business. 
doesn't interfere with me. I feel for them because I know what they're about to go through. You know, mm -hmm. all this shit is great until something like that bad happens. And then you think about all the shit you could have done. Like yeah. when you saw McGregor holding on to his head after Khabib, <sighs> he wasn't thinking about the check. He was thinking about all the time he wasted on not working what he should have been working on. That's right. When I shot my Netflix special on the ride home, I knew what the recipe was that I wasn't doing. And now I'm sticking to it, and that's why I am doing what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. But I saw something years ago. I saw a comic that was young, handsome, had all the tools to be a comic, mm -hmm. and he was a great writer. Okay. And he got good at a certain club. <laughs> never forget this. He got very good at a certain club. And that was a hot club at the time. Okay. So since the guy spent a lot of money with Gersh, you know, it's like if I give you, if I hire all of your fucking 10 comics, at that time, Gersh had Rogan and, 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 and Wendy Liebman and Slate. That was the and, hot boutique that agency back then. was the hot boutique then. agency mm -hmm. back then. And he gave them a lot of business. So one day he raised his hand and this kid had been doing comedy two years, two and a half Oof. years. I'll never forget still going to the club and the guy looking at me and like sizing me up. And I look at those guys and I go, you know, you might have fucking had a good set last night, but I'm at the store every night. I will every eat night. you up alive. I know shit you never even thought of, you dumb motherfucker. And I remember us doing a two, a one night together, like me being in the car with him and listening to his Ugh. ego talking and just think I've just been doing this for two years and look what the things I'm doing already. And I'm sitting in It's the almost car. like he's telling himself. Yeah, Believe I'm it. just sitting there because I've been, to, bullshit. Stop, yeah. I've been to this. I know. You killed mm -hmm. the other night and David Tell told you and this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They patted you on the back because yeah, they're but nice people. You also people. fucking bought drinks and brought the coke. Yeah. So we drove to the gig and he talking in the gig and the whole thing, you know, I go up there. And then about three months later, I hear that this manager has set up showcases for this fucking stiff in L.A. And in the back of my mind, I wasn't wishing this kid any bad, anything bad. I it's just, just a know little the, I just know the deal. Yeah. Bro. I've been here too long. I've been doing it for too long and I knew the deal. At that time, I had been doing comedy if it's 27 years, it had to, this had to happen at the store. I was still doing blow, so it had to be about 2005. Mm -hmm. And I'll never, ever forget this. That's the year I quit. I will never, ever forget this. I remember it was a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I was hosting. And my top agent at CAA today was an assistant at Gersh. Oh, yes. So, Blake... What's his name? Uh, Matt Blake. Matt Blake. Was That's it. the chick's assistant. Yeah. There was two big guys at Gersh. That William the Morris, wig, yeah. The wig and the blonde one that was sucking <laughs> the black dick. The chick that was fucking all the black comics. We're not going to mention no names. Wait a minute. There's two of this those. This chick would yes, go on the road, go, girl. <laughs> pick black guys up, and then bring them back, put them on Freaky Monday with one condition, <laughs> that they would sleep at the house. Sure, you could sleep at my couch. Uh, and in the middle of the night, every black guy oh, yeah. I know said they got up and she was Harvey and his dick, polishing that motherfucker. And None the of thing them about pressed this charges, chick, nobody by pressed the way. charges. <laughs> but one black dude fell in love with him, was out there bringing oh, roses, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they put a restraining order on him. <laughs> then they made her a lit agent somewhere. She sucked so much. They cotton, got rid of her. They got rid of her in I the remember. comedy division. Mm -hmm. But Matt Blake was the assistant then, who yeah. was my top agent today. Yeah. So it's just to let you people know what happens in 20 years. That assistant you talked to when you first yes. moved to LA, 20 years from now, he's going to run a comedy division. Yeah. So he runs the comedy division at my agency. He's the top guy. Yeah. So I Wait, he's this. at William Morris, right? No, he's at CAA, Matt Blake. Oh, shoot. The I wig, know what I'm doing. I'm wig, I know what I messed up. The wig is at Gersh still because yes. he's got Chappelle. That's the yes. only thing that keeps him at. Yes, yes, yes. He had Carlos. Okay, I, yeah. And then he fought when the wig yeah. had Carlos and Rogan. The wig and my ex used to really Really fight. be tight. No, no, fight. no, no, no. You're talking about the wig from ICM. No. That's a different wig. Gersh. That's the guy with, then there's a guy that. ICM is the another guy, The guy at yeah. Gersh doesn't wear a wig. 
I just say he has it a wig. It looks it. Yes. And I call him to his face. He I hates see him me. everywhere. Yeah. But he called Rogan up and told Rogan to apologize to Carlos. Yeah, I remember and that. Rogan told him to go fuck himself, fired him. Yes. And David Tell fired him, and everybody else fired him because of the Rogan comment. And David Tell stuck with him. So Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. So that's the only reason why he, but there's two wigs. There's that wig and the other wig. So what are we talking about? So I'm at the comedy store. I'm hosting on a Sunday night. I'm uh-huh. minding my own business. I'm not bothering nobody. And Mitzi's there. Okay. And Mitzi gets there about 9 or 8.30. Mm-hmm. She walks into a chair and I go over, what's up? Uh, it's you know, fat baby. And she stabs me in the stomach <laughs> and makes the air come out and all yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah. And I go to her, you know, Mitz, I'm hosting the second half. And she goes, absolutely. And all of a sudden, uh, Blake, the club owner, mm-hmm. he, the, he was the pseudo club owner right. of his club. Right. He told everybody he was the owner, but he was really a general manager. Yeah. And the comic that he thought, you know, was God on ice that I looked through and I was like, this guy's got the balls of a fucking <laughs> girl. He's yeah. in a cave. Like, I didn't wish him any. I didn't wish him no bad feelings, people. What I did feel was bad for him because he was going into an arena he was not prepared for. That's right. He was not prepared. It's a different at, animal. At the, two, at, at the two and a half year mark, I don't care what smoke they're blowing up your ass in your neighborhood, you were not ready for a Sunday night at the store in front of Mitzi. It's sure. never happened. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. So they come up to me and they go, hey, we spoke to this talent coordinator, and he said it's okay if this kid goes up. I recognize mm-hmm. everybody. I hug everybody. You know me. What's going on? I go, I'll bring you up. I go up to Mitzi, me being me, and I go, Mitz, I got to put this kid on. I guess he cut a deal with Scott Day or whoever was the talent coordinator at the time. It wasn't Corey yet. It's probably I, Tommy if it was two thousand. No, no, no. This, Tommy wasn't Oh, even, this was way this before. Was okay. Then it had to be Scott Day, yeah. So I go, uh, I'm going to put him up. I go, they say he's the Bill Hicks of the future. And I say that as a joke to her, but with a serious face. Like I go, That's amazing. they're calling him the Bill Hicks of the future. Oh, really? And she goes, okay, go put him on next. This kid went up there, dog. Threw out his fucking joke of the year. And it's the original room on his a Sunday. His slammer. His slammer. Dog, he fit. threw out his A material. And it was like giving him a shovel. It's like they just tapped him on the shoulder. When he got on stage, the spirit of Richard Pryor tapped him on yeah, the shoulder hey, and Kennison and said, hey, buddy, take this shovel. Look what you're about to cause. And at the one-minute mark, she's in the back going, give him, give him the light. Oh. Bill Hicks, my ass. Right? She's Bill yelling. Hicks is turning in his grave. God damn it. And this kid's turning. You could, you could see. You could see, like, oh, the she movement. was brutal too. You could the hear movement her movement in his hands went away. You could see the purple going up <laughs> his body. You could see the purple, and then you could see the purple hit his face. And he just put the fucking microphone back, and he walked off the stage, bro. And he went outside, and I'll never forget his manager, his so-called manager, the big uh... and the guy from Gersh just turned their back, and he stood there looking around, and nobody would look at him. And then they're like, okay, are we done yet? Let's go to the improv. And this kid, you could see that he had gotten punched in the stomach hard. His manager and the guy from Gersh walked 10 feet ahead from him on the way out. And I'll never forget this lesson. And here's how this lesson ends. I went to that town a few weeks ago. And I asked about that kid. Okay. He's a bartender. He got out of the business. You have to. It was too much. It was... that night devastated him. He but, went on, he went on to do the improv for some yeah. schmucks and he went on to do the laugh factory. He hooked up with a girl. He did comedy like maybe ten more times. That's it. And that was the end today. But the comedy store will do that to you. Because it is a purist. Well, it's club. not it's not that comedy store will do it to you, is that if you play that game, eventually that's gonna happen to you. Exactly. Because yeah, that you do not belong there yeah Matt, guys like, like i guys like andrew yeah joe rogan uh, there's a lot of guys bill burr there's a lot of guys that know because not because we're trying to be critical of you i've heard bill burr talk about it this monday morning but it's not that we're trying to be critical from you is that we've been there yeah and we've lied to ourselves 
when I was at the four year, when I was doing comedy a year, I was telling people I was a comic. Yeah. And bombing. I still remember bombing in a private. I got a private at my two and a half year mark. I got a private mm -hmm. that they didn't even want to pay me. I couldn't even. <sighs> I couldn't even go collect the money from them. We couldn't even make eye contact. Perpetrator fraud, yeah. It was a fraud. Fake you know? it till you make it kind of a thing. is what. I, and I get everybody does it. Like Dice, we joke about him. Uh, and Tony Hinchcliffe does it a little bit too. Like I always tell Tony that Andrew always says he's very similar to him because he was, Tony's always pushing himself. Always, I'm the uh, up rising comic, whatever. I'm the greatest up and coming comic. But it's, he has what to back it up, but he also is just like putting it out there kind of a thing. And part of it is kind of fucking with people. But Dice, he wouldn't do a movie unless he could be Dice. Like he would wear his own shirt that said Dice. Like he put it in your face. He's like the original like brander, if you will. Like, he did two movies where he played d the Dice character that he was trying to sell to people. Pretty in Pink and... uh Ford Fairlane. Making the grade. No, no. No, not Ford His Fairlane. name was Dice. Ford Fairlane. He was Ford Fairlane. That was his. Ford, that's right. That's right. So Dice was, uh, but he was called the Dice Man in Making the Grade and in Pretty in Pink. That's a huge movie, John Hughes. It's Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink. I that they're going, that. the Dice Man yeah, as yeah, he walks yeah, yeah, yeah. up. I'll never forget But John yeah, Cryer yeah. says it. Everybody says the Dice Man and he has a shirt that says Dice. So they're like, who's this Dice Man? You know what I mean? Like, that's the ultimate branding. But that's what he did. And then he would go around and tell people, I'm going to be the biggest comic in the world. And they'd be like, get the fuck out of my face, this 20-something-year-old kid from Brooklyn. I'll smack the shit out of you. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to be the biggest thing in the world. And Listen, he, but bro. he did it. So but it's you like, got to remember, the respect. But you have to have what to back it up. You have, remember, he started as a fucking Tony... Uh, uh, John Travolta person. Oh, yeah, yeah. His father would have to drive him to the fucking mafia gigs, and he would get up there with a white shirt and First dance. First, he'd do Jerry Lewis. He did Jerry Nutty Lewis. Professor. And then he'd do fucking. Drink the thing and come back as a Travolta. A Travolta. I mean, who the fuck could invent that? He, and he was so, so young, so his parents had to drive him. His father, he told me the story. Freddie's the best, yeah. His father his dad. had to fucking drive him. To uh, what was the club with Travolta film that movie? He said he oh yeah, he got one. a cease and desist yes, because of that. Because of that yeah. shit, it's crazy to stop doing. So Travolta. he always Isn't had chops. Andrew always had chops yeah. because he started as. It's like I always lie to people. I tell people, oh, I started a fucking prison the first time I thought I was doing comedy. I started playing the congas <coughs> in my mother's bar. Oh, when I was a kid, I'd get a conga, put a hat out. And I just put the jukebox on. And I would play the congas, and people would pay me to stop. Derek, yeah, and basically, like, yeah, and yeah. When yeah. I would get like ten bucks, I'd stop. I'd put it away and go buy something. I would play the congas, and they would say, "Enough, yeah, enough. We can't fucking think." And my mom would go, "It's genius. At least you're making ten bucks for yourself. You know what I'm saying? At least He's I'm, gonna order more of that Metagon food. At least I'm that <laughs> light. At least I don't have to give you fucking money. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's where it started. That mind." Yeah. That, you know, then the number one bus. And then I never knew I wanted to get into comedy. You know, the other night I was watching. See, that's watching, amazing. I but when prior. you were in prison, you said you when would I watch. Was, when stuff. I was in, what, I always watched stand up. Okay, so I never watched, did. Let's get something straight. I heard the niggas crazy and I lost my mind. Then I bought Bicentennial Nigga. Was it something I said? Yeah. I got into it. I was into it. My I brothers it. played it. When I was I a didn't... kid and people put, put music on the. John and Oates, she's a rich girl, and she's going too far. Take that off. They're from Philadelphia. Take that Relax. off. I'm putting nice fucking, I'm putting fucking <laughs> Richard Pryor on. No, I get but it. But I had no idea. I was a criminal. I had no idea, no idea, no idea, no idea. Then when I was 27, I started running out, out of options of things I really wanted to do. Yeah. And I said, well, I tried electricity. I tried this. I tried that. I tried this. I was a bartender. I might as well try stand-up. I don't see one. I mean, that's amazing. I, that's Al Madrigal has a, a joke, not a joke, but he, like we always talk about when everything else fails, try stand up. Like, like I came out here to be an actress. I wanted to be an actress. I kept getting engaged to idiots, you know, and falling back and getting in a play. Nobody comes to plays out here. Then I became a wrestler, right? <laughs> Some issues there. But, you know, like I was doing these kid shows and stuff on Nickelodeon. Like I had, I was doing stuff, but not enough. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it just wasn't clicking. 
I guess, and I would go to class all the time. I would do. No, I know you were in an intensive. Always. I remember you and Freddie got into an oh, intensive yeah, we acting class. Oh, yeah, we were obsessed. It was Scientology. It was sat light Scientology. <laughs> And Pretty they much. couldn't go on auditions. D.W. Brown, And I Joey remember Bear. Freddie trying to justify it to me. And I'm like, Freddie, you and me are cool. Uh, uh, it's Sherry God Shepard, rest too. Soul. God rest your soul. You're cool. But you're never going to tell me that no. I'm not going to audition. That's right. Because when I was at Ivana Chubbick, I went to Ivana oh, Chubbick yeah, for I, two I went or to three her months. Too. Yeah. And I was already starting to audition. Yeah. And they were like, well, we don't know. What don't you know? What is it don't you know that you don't know if I'm yeah, going to make money? If I'm making money, obviously, your acting class is working. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. And I'm going to go out. But you're never going to control me and tell me I can't Yeah, we didn't out. listen to that. Freddie, at the beginning, was, was no drinking bueno. the Kool-Aid. And yeah. then he quit the second year to go right. on tour. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Everybody was drinking Fuck the Kool-Aid. Sherry you know, Shepard, too. She quit every, to go people, yeah, to a people show. were telling you in acting classes, you're not ready. Get the Dog, fuck out of here. I'm a stand-up. I come from a different world. They're not ready. Yeah. These kids that get out of college and took a theater program That's and come right. here, they're not ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm at that store fucking nine nights a week yeah. following Mooney and the lights of this guy and Eddie Griffin. So even though I'm not a, a seasoned actor, I'm three quarters of the way here. Absolutely. I just got to find my fucking way. Yeah. And I did. You know, eventually I found out why Mitzi Shaw gives you three minute spots. Yeah. At the end of it, what's an audition? Three minutes. If you can't sell yourself in three, three minutes. Three minutes. You can't sell yourself. And every you comic are. will come to you and say, I don't get it. I can't do three minutes. Well, you better learn my quick. My bits are too long. I have because, Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know quit. what to do. Just because quit. my bits, well, chop the bit. Yeah. yeah it teaches you Figure how to out cut a, the fat and just. Get I don't, to the point. Mitzi didn't care if you just went up there and did punchlines. Yeah. Just get them laughing. That's it. <laughs> if it's without a setup, if you can get away with it. If I get away without kissing you and fingering you. It would be a beautiful fucking yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. It would be a beautiful world, but you can't. But she taught you. Those three minutes got me ready to audition eight yeah. years later. Like, I got into the store in 97. I started booking like a motherfucker in That's 2003. Because right. you're constantly learning to just be because, in the moment. You, the whole I thing. Because I learned in between comedy and acting, and I put it together. Yeah. I took the acting class. I paid attention. I did the scene studies. Yeah. I went to a cold reading workshop. I fucking, you know, you go to those acting classes, they hook you up with a kid that he's not a stand-up. Yeah. So Every you have time. to learn. So they'll call you eight times a day saying, hey, when are we going to rehearse? And you're like, bitch, I'm fucking writing. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, whoa. Wait a minute. That's right. You got to rehearse. So you got to call him. Three times mm -hmm. a week and go, we're meeting at 2.30 at my house this week. Or where do you live? Oh, I live in yep. Marina Del Rey. You got to go down there and rehearse. So every week you're rehearsing and now you're going on stage at night. Yeah. Do you understand what's going on? There's a process. You're just not going to. So now while you're rehearsing in the daytime, getting better yep. at your acting, at night you're getting on stage. You're doing three spots a week. You're doing three spots a night. You're getting on stage. You're getting yeah, on stage. Yeah. And eventually... Both worlds become one. Yeah. And now you know how to go into a room and start going, it's, well, they gave me this audition, but it only had one line. Welcome to the real world. That's right. Learn how to take that one line and, and cut it into three yeah. and stay in there for three minutes. Yeah. Mooney, instead of one. I remember Mooney, uh, I used to get so frustrated. I'd come to the store, I'd be pissed off. I'd be like, man, I, I just, I blew an audition. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong. And he's like, girl, you ain't going to book anything until you walk into the audition the way you walk into that OR. I was that, like, that oh, That makes shit. sense, yeah, yeah. Fucking Mooney, Mooney man. was, no, but, all those but guys. But what he meant was, I walk in like I own it. The, that was my, I was there every night. You know, I worked, I was a waitress. I took, you know, so I walked in there, even though I'm not a comic or the owner or whatever, for some reason, I walk in that room like that's my living room. And that's how you have to do in an audition. Walk in like you already got the fucking part. You're just here to pick up the check. How many years are you doing comedy when you take the blue show for Showtime? Oh, not that. Uh, that's five years ago now. So the five. blue show on Showtime is five years. So seven, seven you, years. You were into comedy seven yeah. years already. Yeah. And now you got your second booking on yeah, TV? Yeah, uh, this is the Comedy Central um, with all things comedy and Bill Burr. It's almost like the, um, what? It, it's not called the Presents Comedy Central B Premium Blend. Remember they used to do yeah. the short yeah. sets? Right. So these are the shorter sets, which is great because like you were just talking about doing 
When Mitzi would make you do three minutes, you have to sell yourself in three minutes, right? Now we got to go back down. These sets are five minutes. You know, I've been headlining this. I'm doing an hour. You start stretching things out longer. Five minutes is so hard now. I'm like, dang. So you just got to get back into that motion. So this week and next week, I have all set up like little five minute spots here and there, you know, just to get back into that rhythm of editing. Because I remember one night I wasn't a comic. I was a waitress. Me and you are in the back of the, like in the kitchen of the comedy store. Mitzi comes in. I start talking to Mitzi. Or no, I was telling you a story about calling the cops for the first time in my life. And you're like, that's hilarious because I w wound up being a bird on my stupid. It wasn't a person. It was a bird that was like chirping or nibbling at my window. And I thought it was a person. <laughs> and uh, so I, you like, you got to tell Mitzi that story. You got to tell Mitzi that story. It's hilarious, right? So I tell Mitzi and she's like, edit, honey get to the point my whole body shut down i was like fuck you i'm not a comic like <laughs> but i was like oh yeah there's like things like how you can get there quicker you know what i mean and just get the point out get the funny out and move on and she that's all she wanted to see ever and i, I remember my whole body locking up and freezing like i'm never gonna become a comic she's so mean but she was so right that's what she Are you is. really proud of yourself for what you've done? I am. I, I, I am because I'm, like I said, with the acting, I loved acting. I only wanted to be an actress. I never wanted anything else. My mom called me Jezebel from the time I could talk. Like I was just always, but it was weird because I would do impressions. I would make them laugh, but I thought I was acting. You know what I mean? Like I would, if there was anything was in the news. I would reenact it for my mom to make her laugh, do stupid stuff, do impressions of, everybody in the neighborhood like people are like if if the people i do impressions of were famous i'd be huge because i'm so good at those impressions but it was just those people those people yeah like my friend cindy or my sister karen or this drunk lady named ellen not used to, to interrupt you my wife told me you know who's pregnant who what's the girl that used to dance on stage during chewy's shows at the hollywood bowl when she picked <sighs> up her leg adrian shawshank Please. she's in dc and she's pregnant wow <coughs> that's amazing my i wife, love adrian i love adrian i love adrian adrian was my favorite Can i do a confession mm -hmm. i'm the one that used to rob her on monday nights <laughs> oh man all these years i thought it was somebody else yeah. <laughs> i used to rob her like one monday a month she'd be like i lost three hundred dollars i'm like Jesus. adrian how the fuck do you i'd have to I'd have to avoid all her drinks. I'm like, she's like, I don't know what happened. You could, listen, remember that time they gave her the bad drugs? Oh, that was terrible. She I, was trying I, to eat. What about this the time? lip was down here? I don't know how she did that. She was into different shit, but one time, I took a hundred dollar <laughs> stack of singles. You better send her a check from the comedy store. They were all sitting back there counting money. And Ricka was back there. And I I see, I in, used to blame his friend. And I walked in to get a check. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I walked in to get a check. And I saw the money, and Ricka was looking go. at a calendar, and I just picked up the money like a joke, and nobody saw it, so I just put it in my jacket. I walked out. It was a stack of 100 singles, right? I took the bank thing off, and I threw it in the thing, and I had 100 singles. <gasps> I walked down to Pink Dot. I gave them 50. They gave me two 20s and a 10, and I did something real quick. But by the time I got back to the store, they were all like, the manager's missing hundred dollars. He thinks Mike Rickett did it, and I'm fucking dying of laughter. Poor Mike Rickett. I'm like, I'm he, off the fucking hook. That's why he had to move back home because <laughs> show oh, yeah. oh, I know who we had on our podcast. We on the Comedy Store podcast. We had uh, the Bushman Lahai. You remember Lahai Fambula? Where is he, dude? You would. He's a comedy gold on a podcast. He's hysterical. He always does Danish and O'Neill. He always does all, well now we'll have him do but our where is lot. he? He's downtown right in a book or no he's living in Koreatown. Okay, you gotta get me his Oh number. my he goes, Joe Diaz don't help me out. I go, oh, whoa, whoa. Joe Diaz. I have not seen I go, him I'm gonna I I'm gonna not, get Joe Diaz's not ass not even, for not helping you out. I did not even know Lahai was still around. Lahai. You know, you get him to say certain names. Like he's like, when I was in Seattle, I worked with Coco Bean. I'm like, who's Coco Bean? That's Joey Kurt D. Cobain. Kurt Cobain. That's right. <laughs> Eddie he, Van. Ha he says everything wrong. It's amazing. I did not even know. Dude, he's great. He's, he's writing a, a book right now. He's listen, the nicest man. His daughter's a, a, a dynamite. 
<laughs> his daughter's a kid. what do you call that influencer on uh in, like on on son. social media and his shit. son's got to be a man his son is a basketball player there you overseas go. There you phenomenal go. yeah his son i still remember two daughters and a son yeah. i still remember going back to his in seattle house right in seattle <laughs> Him taking us to we a party basement. all the time. We used to get down. Jack. Bushman likes the to Bush party. Man like to party. Joey, what? If you see him, send him my love. I'll email. I'll give him your email. He's a great fucking dude. Dude, I, just, we, I would dab him in this podcast in a minute. He's blood to me. I go. You just reminded me of somebody that I've forgotten about completely like that i'm, I'm sad because <laughs> everybody I, went crazy. Josh Wolf was like, "Oh shit, the Bushman's here!" Like. My God, out. we've known him. We were kids together. And here's the funny mm -hmm. thing. I got into trouble one he time. He calls me here. Illinois. It's very funny. Illinois. One, Hello, Illinois. One time we, I got in trouble out here. <laughs> like something happened. I had to lay low for a couple of days. I turned to Lahai. And Lahai's like, I got a place for you to stay at. <laughs> so he gives me this Lahai's fucking the address. Best. I meet him outside. I had to chill for like two or three days. And I pull up. And he takes me upstairs to his, this hideout, no air conditioning. You know, the windows are open. You can hear Mexican music. You can hear Spanish people. I'm just sitting on the living room couch. I'm just sitting there sweating. And all of a sudden, it's 2 in the afternoon. And I just see a rat just crawl across the kitchen. Oh, like, oh. And I said, Lahai, I love you like a brother. But this ain't going to happen. I called my oh, friend. Oh, no that, big deal. No big deal. Of you course. sure? All you have to give That's me dinner. is 100 a month. Listen, I can't give you $10 a month because I can't fucking stay here, right? I think I ended up staying with Joey Medina instead right out there. <laughs> That's how bad Lahai's place oh, was. Yeah. Lahai, I can't fucking do it. But I got to tell you something. Fambula. We did a lot of, but I still remember going to his house. And those mm -hmm. kids were sleeping at 2 in the morning. Monday nights we would get. Do you remember he used to up. work on Venice Beach and he'd yeah. be wearing the loincloth oh, and, and he'd stick, have a spear. A spear. Put the money in the pan and he pointing a spear at people. He goes, oh, they don't want to put the money. It's okay." I go, "Lahai, you're re you have a spear in their face." I know. Lahai was possible. It was me. Me and Freddie La love Lahai. Josh Wolf, Mark Madison. And La oh my God, La Mark La Madison has been here for a long time. Yeah, he goes, I showcase for Mitzi, nobody helping me. <laughs> did Joe Mitzi, Diaz did Mitzi didn't pass help him. Me. Yeah, Mitzi passed him. Yep. Yeah, he was a regular for a while. It was me. He was up there a lot. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a lot of people who just it's not that go away. Not, it's yeah. not that you're not there. He's got a family. Anymore. He's got yeah. a family and people. Life goes different. But he brought up Joe Diaz. I go, I'm telling Joe yeah, Diaz. Yeah, I love La <laughs> No, Lahai never hit me up. I forgot Lahai even existed. That's how many... Same, until I heard you know, him on bro, the other podcast and I laughed I so am, hard. Like... Oh, shit. <clears throat> people don't uh, understand the responsibilities I have now. Yeah. Like, I don't have the same responsibilities I had seven years Oh, exactly. Years ago. You have children. I have so different everything changes. Yeah. And it's so weird when you have to tell people no. Or, like, I was just thinking about something I got to do tonight. And I'm like, fuck. That yeah. My day's not finished. I still got to go home and do this and this and this. And then I got to go down there. So it's going to be tough even doing that tonight. You have so many things yeah. that pop up in your plate that life goes on. And uh, when are you taping the show? We're taping uh, April 16th. Oh, no, I'm sorry, April 17th and 18th. They're doing two nights, I guess, at this theater downtown. What do I call it? The Tierrigan? Yeah. Tier when Josh Adam Myers and me spoke, and he mentioned your name, I was so proud of you, and I wanted to get you on the show to let people know uh, your journey. To let Because I started as a doorman at Wits End. I just remember the other day when Steve Simone was here that I did my doorman stint. What's and Wits End? Wits End was a club in Denver. It was a small club, a satellite club. Mm-hmm. In Westminster, Colorado, in a strip mall, they just had local people, BU comics, stuff like that. <sighs> but I started by watching. I mean, I wasn't watching for 12 fucking years. Right. I would have died. I would have started comedy when I was 80. Well, I was trying. I know. I but, did, people are like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm almost dead. Relax. Fucking idiots. Like, But I'm very proud of you, Eleanor. Aw, thank you. Thank yeah, I'm you. thrilled Josh just... Adam Myers is on it. There's a lot yeah, of great people. Yeah. Rick Ingram's doing it, Punky Johnson. Like, this is going to be a big thing. I'm, or, well, it's a big thing for me. I don't Burr. care. Bill, Bill Burr's Burr. bringing you up. This That's is the biggest name in comedy. Approved by Bill by Burr. Burr. That's Burr. all I care about. That's all about. you care about, I really, 
That and guy I, knows the struggle. He knows. He's been there. He's been on a show that got canceled. He went and rebuilt himself. Yeah. And now he's the comic that he is today. I take my hats off to Bill Burr every fucking day every of the week. Every day of the week. I think he's at the store Thursday night, and I'm pissed because I'm not there. But I haven't he, seen him. I yeah, want to see a piece my, of his new special, something. The big part of me, like when Andrew gave me that thing on Showtime, the blue show, and he really pushed for me because they didn't know who the heck I was. No, they were like, no, who the hell is no. this girl? And is this some girl you're trying to sleep with? He's like, I already did that. So just let's help her out, right? So they put me in there, and all I cared about was making him proud. Wow. And now that Bill Burr re- like looked at my stuff and was like, yes. <clears throat> like I had to submit stuff to them, and he approved it. So to me, I'm like, oh, my God. Now all I care about, like, just do a good job to make Bill proud. Like, that's that's comedy recognizing comedy. You know what I mean? Comics recognizing yeah. comedy. No, that's a and I look comedy. up to him. Yeah. yeah so no, it's not like fucking some network that likes. I you. watched him Fuck. come in and showcase and not get passed and never get on. Mitzi just looked right past him like nothing I've ever seen. Not like Louis C.K. With Louis, she said he was too polished, but with Bill, it was just like he didn't exist. Because it was his manager. She didn't know them or care for them or something. There was something. And then finally, I think she saw him in the main room. She goes, this guy's terrific. I'm like, bitch, we've been telling you. But, you know, he was in New York and he was touring and he was doing his thing anyway. So, Well, I'm happy you took the time. No, oh, thank you for having me. To Very come excited. over because you know I love you to death and I wish you it's all. It's my that. favorite podcast. Everywhere I go, people are like, oh my God, you! I love you on the church. I'm like, I don't go to church that much, but I love this I church. Love, I love <laughs> to have you on. I'm very proud of you. Ellen. Thank I'm you, Jody. Yeah. You stuck it out and put the work in and uh, you got what was coming to you. It is work. Don't pretend it's not. No. I love why, when people I love are it. like, I love it. No, I love it. Not. I love it. I, 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 you know, you see. Him I go up once a month. month. Yeah, I'm like, no, no. get to, to Dubai. <laughs> this is a, a weird game, and a lot of people. But any dates you like to promote? Oh yeah, uh, April fourth through sixth, I'm gonna be in Kansas City at the Comedy Club. Uh, that's the name of it, the Comedy Club. It's a great club. I'm excited. My friend Dustin owns it, and uh, it's a new, brand new club. So come out, support. Jeremiah Watkins was just there, and it was great last weekend. I'll be there April fourth through the sixth, and then House of Comedy April twenty fourth through the twenty eighth in Phoenix. Oh shit! Oh, that's shit. a good fucking club. That's a good organization. Can't wait. Yeah, I love They're them. Good people. Well, I'm happy you took the time to get on. I, on the other hand. We'll be in Pittsburgh next weekend, but it's I only got one show left Thursday night late, which we added the 10 o'clock show. And then you guys know I'm at the fucking Fitzgerald Theater in Minneapolis on 419, pre-420. And then 420, you motherfuckers know we're coming in deep to the Paps Theater in Milwaukee where Jeffrey Dahmer killed his third victim. Anyway. <laughs> That's how we fucking do it. I'll see you guys there. But before I go, I got to talk to you people about something. The church is sponsored by Stamps.com. You know why? Because time is money, cocksuckers. Stop wasting your precious time going to the post office when you can send letters and packages right from your desk. Do it today with Stamps.com. My wife has been on Stamps.com since we started this. We sent our T-shirts out, mugs. Listen, it's the best way to go. With just your computer and a digital scale, you'll be printing postage at home. Boom, bang, you're done. It's that easy. But Uncle Joey, there's got to be a catch. What if I need a mail to a saxophone to Timbuktu? Listen, with Stamps.com, you can print U.S. postage for any letter, any size, package going anywhere in the world, right from your couch. You're at the post office right now, Jack. And the best part of it is the mailman will come and pick it up. They bring the U.S. Postal Service right to you. No more lugging boxes down to the post office. More time to get things done. Now you got no excuses. And here's the crazy thing about this. Stamps.com is actually cheaper than the post office. You never pay full price for stamps again. And their postage meters are a fraction of the cost. Plus, you don't got to sign up a lease and there's no long-term commitment. How many times am I going to schlep you to the post office in your life? Stop leaving money on the table. Sign up today for stamp.com, all right? I use it because it saves me time and money, and that's precious. And right now, they got a special offer for the church family. You ready for this one? Write this down. A four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. So go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and use promo code SEARCH, C-H-U-R-C-H. 
That's stamps.com. Enter church. Start sending mail like a doctor with stamps.com. Number two, listen, picking a reliable CBD company, it's tough. You don't know who to go with. I mean, I've gone through 10 or 11 different labels for CBD, but I found the one that fits for me. You ready for this? CBD Lion. Why? Because CBD Lion makes their products from start to finish. They got you covered. It comes in a it comes in a vape, it comes in cartridges, it comes in shatter. And if you're not into smoking it, guess what they got? They got a tremendous gummy bear that'll knock your fucking socks off. And they got tinctures that you put on your tongue for 30 seconds. You're swallowing, you're brand new. You understand me? Their products are clean, Bobby. And they're not talking about fakes here, no fugazis with that fake advertising. You go to CBD Line right now and check out their third-party lab results. Listen, when I saw that brochure, I almost died. I have never been more impressed with a company. They back what the fuck they say, and they say what the fuck they're going to do. So do me a favor. Go to CBD Lion right now. CBDLion.com right now. And the church family gets 20% off at checkout. Just make sure you put church in at checkout. That's CBDLion.com. Go there right now. I'm telling you, I live off the tension. I'm waiting on the gummies to come. You guys are going to see me popping gummies like a fucking animal. And all you need to pop is like two or three of them. After you get high, boom, you'll sleep like a fucking baby. Number three, one of the most important things you do for your health is brushing your teeth. Listen, my teeth are purple because I'm 55 years old and I've smoked everything. And yet most of us don't brush our teeth properly. Quip is the better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip has designed to make brushing teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. Me, I love it. Why? Because it's got the timer, it's, it charges easily, and I can take it on the road, and I got no drama. Let me tell you something. It's gentle enough on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and sometimes electric like toothbrushes are too abrasive. Quip has a built-in two-minute timer, which I love. Every 30 seconds, it reminds you when to switch sides, helping you guide for a full and even clean. Up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or clean our teeth evenly. Now, with this multi-use cover, it mounts to your mirror and unmounts to slide over the bristles for on-the-go brushing. All right? It declutters your sinks and your cabinets, and it makes traveling with an electric toothbrush a lot easier. Like I told you, Quip doesn't require a chunky charger and runs for three months on one charge. Their dentist recommended schedule every three months for just five dollars. Three out of four use bristles that are old, worn, and effective. And ineffective. The brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule of every three months for just five dollars. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes approved by the American Dental Association and has been and has been verified five star by thousands of people. So I'll tell you what, the reason why I love Quip is why I told you. It's great for your gums, it comes with the timer, and it's easy to travel with. That's why I love Quip. And that's why they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at $25. So, but if you go to quip.com slash Joey right now, I'm going to get you your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. Who's better than your Uncle Joey? Nobody. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash Joey. Get Quip, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Joey. Again, I want to thank Quip. I want to thank Stamps.com. And I want to thank CBDLion.com for supporting the podcast. But most importantly, I want to thank you motherfuckers for listening and for loving us and for tuning in every fucking Monday and Thursday. I want to thank Eleanor Kerrigan. I want to thank my main man, the Christ Killer. But most importantly, I want to thank you motherfuckers for being loyal. You know I got your back. I'll see you in Buffalo Saturday night. If not, I'll see you motherfuckers in Pittsburgh in two weeks. Stay black. Have a great weekend. God love you. And get ready for Monday, motherfuckers. Thank you, I'll see you guys then. Thank you, Eleanor.